Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street. It's Friday! Or oh, if we can remember what day it is at the moment. But yes, it's Friday! Welcome! It is so lovely to have you here nice and early this morning. Bit of a grey day. Stay in, get your cup of tea, nice thing of biscuits. Just put them on a plate and enjoy the next couple of hours with me. I cannot wait to show you all these wonderful things. You're my lovely little early bird, so you get to hear about our wonderful early bird special. I'm hearing it's actually been selling really, really well online this morning already, which I'm really not surprised about. As we all know, our lovely little rotary cutters, we use them a lot. Um, and our blades are dulling, our blades are dulling, but fear not, our early bird today, you're getting replacement blades, not just one pack, but two packs of three, and you're saving four pounds on these today. $13.98 for all six of those. Isn't that an incredible price? Any of you who buy these blades regularly know, firstly, how difficult they are to get hold of at the minute, but also what a great price that is. What is so important about changing your blades with these, when you're doing your cutting, these are incredibly robust blades. They last a really, really long time. If I'm cutting rigorous, rigorously and doing a lot of cutting in my shop, I go through a blade probably every Depends how conscientious I am, but it, probably about 20 hours, 24 hours of cutting. But what I notice and what we all notice is the second you change that blade, it's like putting a hot knife through butter and it just so smoothly goes through your fabric and you can go through more layers of fabric much more easily every time you change your blade. And it's almost like a little present to yourself that you can do that. And I just, I'm so thrilled that you're getting two because I have a little top tip on these. So what I love about them is, so what they've done is an added feature is that they've put these wonderful little paper um the, the sort of round discs in between the blades because the number of us who take them out and we're like oh i'm gonna cut my finger off and these are incredibly sharp so be careful what they've done is they put these wonderful tapes that you can then pull that up take your blade out and then change it so much more easily. Now what I always do is when I buy two of these, I put all the new blades into one. I get a Sharpie and I write new on the top of one of them so I know that that's got six in them. And then the empty one, I put old and then I put my old blades that I'm taking out in the container. Because what's really great is that they're for safety. You don't, most of us don't have sharp boxes and can't, don't have access to dropping these off at hospitals and things. And if you just throw this into your bin liners, they're gonna come out and cause damage and uh, potentially harm somebody. So I like to know that my old blades are in one of these old boxes. And by writing the word old on it, I'm not gonna put an old blade into the new one and say, oh, I've broken my blade. So it's always good to have those different pots to be able to do that. And such a great price today for these as well. Six of these rotary cutter blades Blades, two packs of three for $13.98. You can be saving four pounds this morning on these. And these have been selling so well even before we came on air. So I've got our savvy shoppers out there as well. So well, congratulations if you've got that. And don't forget, once you've purchased those this morning, you've paid your PNP all day. You don't have to worry about postage and packaging for any of your future orders through the day. It's all going to be covered under that one PNP. So don't forget to do that. We've got a wonderful series of places in order for you to get in touch with us, and we really love hearing from you in the studio. We've got a new email address, which I love because you can drop us an email at studio at sewingstreet.com. It's a lovely way to be able to get in touch with us if you've got any questions about the products that we've got or just want to ask anything or just say hello. It's a lovely way to be able to do that and that can pop straight into the uh, into Joe's office and into Hannah's office upstairs and they're able to then answer those questions for you immediately. But obviously we've got our social media as well and I'm really excited. I don't know if you all follow our Instagram account and I adore our Instagram account. We've always got lovely stories on there. So if you are on Instagram, make sure you follow us at at Sewing Street is our name on Instagram. We've got two big pages on our Facebook page. The first one run by the channel is Sewing Street TV. That's the nicest one to get hold of us if you want to drop us a message in the studio and you don't want to email us. There's a message bar on that page so you can drop us a line on there as well. But don't 
don't forget our YouTube page. And I was really excited this morning. I looked to see how many views we had on our YouTube page on all of our videos that we've got on there. If you haven't looked at our YouTube page before, make sure you subscribe because you've got the, you'll get a notification every time a new video comes up. So if you've missed something, it'll tell you exactly what it is and what's in the show of that day and you'll get a notification about that. But also on our YouTube page, if you go into the about section, it tells you how many, how many times our videos have been viewed. And I was astonished. 445,000 views of all of the videos that we've had going back to February. It's such a lovely, lovely way to be able to go back and look at things that we've done in the past. If you're doing our wonderful block of the week, you can go back and look at those separate videos individually. And every time you view it, I didn't know this until yesterday, there's actually a little counter. So it shows how many times people have watched our videos. And you're obviously, if you've watched it before, one of our 445,000 people. So thank you so much for doing that. It really, it's such a nice affirmation of what we're doing here. And we're very, very proud of that. Now, last but not least, please, there is one thing that happens every week it happens about two, three times a week. Haley B does the most fantastic newsletter every week. And if you want to sign up to our newsletter, please, there's a web link on your screen at the moment, www.sewingstreet.com slash sign up. And if you pop your email in there, you get to know a couple of days ahead about what's coming up. You can watch out on the website uh, what's coming up on the show and who's doing what. And you can then watch out for products that may be released on the day of the show. And you get a little bit of a preview of what we've got coming up. So it's a really nice way of being able to do that. And also, if you want to find out a bit more about a guest, um, a guest demonstrator, you can then go and have a little look at that. And if you've got any questions, we can try and answer them for you when you're on the, on the show that day as well. So do make sure you sign up. It's a lovely way of doing it. Now, if you haven't used our website before, let me show you how we're going to do that. So you can go on to www.sewingstreet.com. Now, don't be alarmed if you see Jewelry Maker. These are our wonderful um, sister channel. Uh, that they're lending us their website while we're having ours built up. So if you're wanting to go onto the page, you'll see there's a little YouTube link that if you click that now, that'll be me. And then if you want to sign up to our mailing list, there's the easiest way of doing it. You can just go there where that little arrow is on the screen. You can click into where it says email address, type in your email address, click subscribe, and that'll all be available for you. As and when Haley drops an email out to everybody, you'll get that immediately. And I'm really excited every time I get mine, because I've subscribed, I know what's coming up for some of the shows, but some, well, for me, I obviously know what I'm doing in my shows, but I don't know what's going on with Vix and what's going on with Deb. So it's lovely to be able to see what they're up to. And often I've been able to see what's coming up and I'm like, oh, that's my Friday morning sorted. If I'm not on air, I'm gonna go and watch that. So it's a really nice way of being able to stay in touch as well. Now, with these rotary cutters, it's a lovely, lovely thing, but one thing we just want to make sure that everybody is able to do is to change the blade safely. So we did a little demonstration of that a couple of weeks ago, um, and we've separated that as a separate video, as a how-to guide. Now, if anybody has got rotary blade cutters, these, the ones that we're selling today, are 45 millimeter blades. So most of your traditional rotary cutters, we've got the, uh, the Clover one here, we've got the Millwood, which I love to use, and I know we've got it here. There we go. We've got the, the Millwood, the Ulfras as well. All of these rotary cutters use this wonderful, wonderful rotary cutter blade here. Uh, did you say how many? 60? Wow, over, just since we've been doing this, over 60 of you have checked out on those lovely rotary cutter blades. So you're getting two packs of these rotary cutter blades uh, for $13.98. So it's such a great deal. And you're saving four pounds on that as well. Oh, and we've had a message in from Valerie saying she loves the idea of, of labeling your boxes and putting all the new ones in one box and then putting labeling the old ones saying old because she always forgets which one's which. I do too, Valerie. And if I'm honest, the other day when I did the demo, you'll see I put the old one in there and I'm looking at this and going, which one's the old one? So do label your boxes. It's a really nice way of doing it. And that's one of my top tips. And that's why we bundled two so that we can able to put all your new ones in there. You see, they know what we need. Need. Even though that that was what I was thinking, they know it. They're very clever here doing that. So I really, really want you, if you haven't changed a rotary cutter blade before, there's, first thing is be safe, be safe. And if you haven't heard me before, be safe. They are very sharp. Please be careful. We've got a lovely video now to show you then on how you go and do that. So when you open this, you're going to find 
when you open these up. So there is going to be a little bit of oil on it. That is completely normal. You can see that that's quite wet on the inside. That's absolutely normal because these blades, you can keep them for years and years and years and years. And having the oil in them just makes them, the, the longevity last that little bit longer. But the problem with that is when you do come to use them, occasionally you've got a little bit of um, oil that you need to wipe off. Now, these ones are really good because they've got this little paper sleeve in there separating your blade so you can see i've got this little sleeve there and that then separates your blades across so oh hang on there we go so i then put that one back so i've now and my i also then do something differently which i'll show you now so when you wanted to change your blade you're going to first of all make sure you're being very careful pay lots of attention no screaming people in the background make sure that everything's off and you're only focusing on this so you take the screw off you take the nut off and you take this off oh and there we go blade has popped out now can you tell that that's got a ring of dirtiness around there little bits of lint that's quite normal don't worry that's absolutely fine now when you get your rotary cutter like this first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take a piece of fabric i try and get a little thin piece of fabric like this a bit of old salvage works well and I just go in there and I try and get rid of all these little bits of um, fluff in here. And I know you just I go through and I give it a nice little blow as it as well, get rid of everything. And you just give it a bit of a clean because these you're using these every day. And there are little bits of oil in here that you are going to end up just you can see just in that you can see that's got all bits of gunk in it. That is completely normal. There's nothing wrong with your cleaning regime. You do not need to feel bad in any way. That is completely normal. Don't worry. And if it's not, mine is as well. So don't worry. You're in a good company. I also then just take this and fold this a couple of times to go through and just get rid of any little bits that I haven't been able to get. And I just do that just to get rid of bits of fluff and bits that are in there. Right. <clears throat> At this point, I pick up my blade using this lovely little piece of, um, oh, I'm out of screen. So I pick my blade up using this little piece of paper. You can see I've got that piece of paper there. I then put my finger on the middle of this. Now you've just got to make sure you're being safe on this. However you want to do it, just make sure you're being safe. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, hold that that way. I'm just going to pull the paper off. I should have pulled the paper off before I did this. There you go. So you can see you're just getting rid of the paper there. Now, all of us are going to have that happen. You take this to the edge of the table, you hold it and you get it a little bit off the table. And then when you're grabbing it, you're not grabbing it on the blade, the sharp bit of the blade, you're doing that. So then I've just popped that back in there. Now, that is safe for the minute. What I'm going to do now is I know that that bit there goes onto the top here. Now notice that this has got that lovely guard on the edge there. So all I've done is I've just made sure that I put the blade in, I put the, that through, I then take my little nut, and then I take that and I put that on and I tighten that up. Now every rotary cutter is different. You do it how you like. Now I put this to one side. Now watch what I'm doing here. This is important. I'm now taking my empty blade I've put the little piece of paper on the top of it now there are two things you can do with this if you have a sharp spin you then take this and put this in your sharp spin and you get rid of it if like me you don't have a sharp spin when you've used these up what I do with this is because it's so obvious once you've got a blade that's been used you can tell it's dirty I pop that in the in, into the oh goodness me sorry I'm just going to do this and not talk for a second there we go so all I'm doing there is I'm putting the dead one on the top and then I get a sharpie or something and I write two on there knowing that I've got two that are new and one that isn't because there are always going to be three in them and then once you emptied one that's your dead bin and you just write dead on it and then those are your dead blades the reason that's important is because if you don't have a sharps bin um don't put this in your rubbish bin 
wrap it up in paper, but even wrapping it up in paper, it can be quite dangerous. So please, these are really, really sharp. Especially if you've got kids, make sure you're looking after yourselves that way. These are one of those little forgotten things that people just put them in the rubbish bin and then don't realize why there's a massive hole in their, their bin. So that's a great way of doing that. And then once you've done this, the next thing I would say is for the first few cuts that you're doing, goodness me, look at that. So all I'm doing now is, and you literally just take a dead bit of salvage and you just keep doing this. And I always do this. I get a dead piece of fabric that I'm not going to use. And I cut a lot up in one go. It's very good as well. If you've had a really bad day, you just cut little things up and do that. The reason being is that any oil that's now on the outside of your blade is going to come off on this fabric rather than when you cut your Liberty up and we don't want you damaging your good fabric. So that's a really, really, that's my top tip on changing your blades. And having done that, I've just remembered which side my dirty but an old blade was on there. So well done if you've managed to get your blades already. I'm hoping that video helps you on how to change that. This is such a great deal this morning. And so many of you are checking out already. And don't forget, you've got your free PNP once you purchase these for the day. And that's for $3.95. It doesn't matter what you're buying. You're getting exactly the same thing. If you're doing the block of the week, what a nice way to add on to it. Because you've got to do some really nice, accurate cutting on that. And you are going to need new blades on these. And these are a staple. We all all need them and we all use them and we all forget to change our blades and it is like a little gift you give to yourself every time you change them and these are normally $8.99 just for one packet I know because I just went and bought some the other day so if I'd known there was an early bird I'd have got to get some more of these myself but it's such a great deal there and congratulations if you got them already We'll keep you posted on how those are going throughout the day as well and I hope that little video helped you but I am incredibly excited today we have been talking about this bumblebee backpack all morning and look how beautiful this and i know that this fabric was it yesterday that it was on yesterday sold out it's gone i cannot believe it so this is wonderful that we managed to get all of this into this bundle as well and just look how amazing this little bag is and this pocket is so cute i love it so the the book it came from it's called bags by anna a alicia alicia I'm dreadful about announcing people's this. Now you can buy the book separately, but we've got a fabulous bundle for you. You're gonna probably want to do the bundle, but we're gonna look through the book in a few minutes because you know I couldn't possibly have a book on my hand without opening it and flicking and ooing and aahing. But it's such a lovely, lovely book. Just on the outside, look how beautiful that is there. The book's available today for $11.99. Um, there are 18 different bags that you can make out of this book. Um, and I'm just loving it because what I've gone through is, and I love because they give you all the instructions on how to do all these different things as well. It's some great techniques, how to use the book, tools and equipment that you're going to need because I've never made bags before, but it's a nice way. Oh, I've got, I've got a hammer. I can do this. And look, all, are those rotary cutter blades? They better not be. No, they're not. They're a little piece of paper. They're very, I was going to say, that's a very small rotary cutter blade if it is. So you've got all these wonderful different bags. I love that. All these basic, to basic tote as well. It's really lovely. And I love looking at these bo uh, books because normally when you go through them, you can say, oh gosh, I've got that fabric or I've got that fabric. It's a lovely one. Oh, I love that. Oh, look at that. That is so lovely. What a beautiful bag. Can you imagine that in a nice Liberty colorway? Oh. Tula, monkey wrench. Oh my goodness, that's coming up at 10 o'clock. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, and all my, all my bits from Tula arrived last week. Sorry, you don't care about that. You want to look at the book. Oh, I love this. I love it when they've got a little pocket, a little pop there as well. I love these. And this was, this one was my favorite. Just look how beautiful this is. They call it the interview bag, which I love. Look how beautiful that is. And it really does break it down because I've never made bags before. And I think this is a lovely way of being able to go through and design, do the bag the way you want to as well. What a lovely evening, a day to evening bag. Oh, look at that clutch. We get a contrast clutch. Ooh, this is exciting. And I love the fact that it's got the skill level there telling you. So I wouldn't attempt that. It's got two dots. I'm not a two dot person at the moment. I'm definitely a one dot person. But the great thing is you can start from the beginning and go all the way through. Look how fun that is. A pom pom bag. I'm loving that. Oh, that I could probably do. Could I do that one? Is that a one dot? No. Oh, no. 
That's a toiletry bag. No, I can't do a toiletry bag. <gasps> Look how complicated that is. I'm sure once you give it a practice and go, you'll be fine. That is really lovely. That bathroom's beautiful as well. I wonder if it's their bathroom. They should always, you know when you get all those things with saying model's own and it's got shoes or house or whatever. I wish they should put their model's own house or designer's own desk, designer's own camera. What are they taking the photo with if the camera's there? <gasps> oh, there we go. That's a zero. That's a one. I can do that one. Oversized beach bag. Can't wait to go to the beach. Oh, I love that. That is really good. That is stunning. And then these are the bags that we're going to be able to do now. And we've got a video. Of... Oh, that's a skill level three. But I think what's great is we've got a really lovely demo to be able to show you there. It's one of those ones that it doesn't matter if you're not a skill, skill level three, you will be and you'll get there. And if you just take your time, do it step by step, bit by bit, follow the VT, you'll be able to go through there. VT is a video, sorry. You don't know that language as well. Took me, I still don't know what VT stands for, but it's a little video that someone else has done. There we go. <laughs> but if that, if you wanted to get the book with a bundle, we've got three fabulous different colorways here for our bundle. Of course. Which colors do you want to do first? Should we do the orange? Perfect. So this bundle, now I'm going to try and hold this all together without dropping anything. We know it's not going to happen. So get your giggle ready. Whoop. There we go. So you're getting half a meter of each of the fabrics. You're getting the book. You're getting this webbing. So you've got two little bags of webbing here. You're getting these wonderful clasps. So you've got a nice shiny clasp there. And what I love about this, you've got a little bit of a duller one here, which I, I love because then that won't, the, the shine may not be able to pop off on that. But look at this colorway. Look at this canvas. It is so beautiful, this colorway. Look at that. You're getting a half meter of that today. And it's, it feels quite wide. I'm not sure how wide this is, but it is lovely. 100 and, I think this is a four, 140 um, centimeter wide, so 55 inches. It's such a beautiful color and such a nice colorway here. Oh, one day I'll get this folding malarkey right. Today is not that day, but I will. But what I love is the way these colors go together. So we've got this gorgeous brown as well. So all of the colors going forward from here, all the solids. So these aren't canvas, these are cotton. Um, these are for your linings, but this is the size of all the plain colors all the way through. So you'll be able to see all of those as well. So this is that gorgeous brown. It's a lovely, gorgeous chocolate brown, this. And goes so well with this orange. And then we've got this beautiful lemon as well. And then these are the three colors that you'll be using to make your bag. Oh. So you're getting a meter of the, a meter, each of, a meter of each of these webbings. You're getting half a meter of the canvas. You're getting half a meter of the brown cotton and half a meter of the lemon cotton. So you're getting a meter of each of the webbings. You're getting four of these um, D rings, four of the D rings. I can hold these all together. I know I can. And then you're getting two of these clasps that you can use to adjust. But also, not only that, you're getting the book. You're getting all of that for £28.49. And the great thing is, is that the book's got loads of patterns in it. It's 18 different patterns. And this will be enough fabric then to be able to make this wonderful um, backpack. But you could make something else out of it if you wanted to as well. It's a nice, wonderful color combination of those. Um, and then we've got the Fuchsia collection. Oh my goodness. Look at this. I'm sorry, I'm opening this one. <gasps> wow, this is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry, that is absolutely stunning. Andrew, if you're listening, buy this one. <laughs> my poor husband sits at home and I say that and he's got to go into my account and order it for me so I don't miss out. <laughs> that is beautiful. And you're getting so much of that as well. That's 55 inches wide, 140 centimeters. And it is a canvas as well, the cotton canvas, same white weight as the other cotton canvas in the other pack there. But that is so beautiful, that. I've not seen this one by the half. I've not seen this one at all. Otherwise, I would have bought the lot. That is really beautiful. So you're getting that as your cotton canvas. You've got this beautiful, beautiful pink fabric as well. Look how beautifully these pop together. But 
when I see all of this, I thought the bees would sell out like it did yesterday. But looking at this colorway, look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? So not only are you getting these three fabrics there, you're also getting one meter, two meters of your webbing. You're also getting your two adjustable clasps that you can do for your straps. And you're getting your four D rings there. And if anybody else can hold this any better than I can, please pop in. And you're getting the book all for $28.49. Is that not the most incredible deal? Meter and a half of fabric, two meters of your webbing, the D rings, four D rings, the two adjustable um, strap thingamabobbies, whatever they're called, sorry. And the book for $28.49. But you can't deny, is that not the most gorgeous fabric? I really think that we need to do a purchase of that. I have a funny feeling Andrew will be on a call and wouldn't have heard my cry to buy it. <laughs> so now we also have the last bundle here. We've got a metre and a half of each of these. Got a metre of each of those. You've got the alloy strap adjuster. That's what it's called. Now I know. Alloy strap adjuster. You've got the D-rings, exactly like we've had for the last two. But now we're getting this beautiful B fabric there. Is that not just beautiful? Sorry, I left my little silver line on it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful B fabric there. You're also getting this lovely grey. And then the canvas. Is this a mustard or an olive? Just moving the. That is beautiful. Well, it's a mustardy olive colour. You can see what I mean there. That is just such a beautiful, beautiful colourway. And that is what has been used to make this bag. And you can see how beautiful that is. And then the lining is the grey fabric, which we've used over there. You can see the lining there. Obviously, no. Um, no zips are included in that at the moment, but the great thing with that is that you can do your own zip You can find your own zip, but we also have a few available on the website So if you go into our search bar at the top and type in zip you'll be able to come up with all the different zips that we've got as well So we'll show you some few um, after the video after the demonstration But we've, I'm really excited. We've got a fabulous demonstration showing how to make these beautiful bags so I'm gonna love you and leave you for that for a little while and Right, so if you are waiting for the block of the week, um, our little video may go over into nine o'clock. Really sorry about that, but don't you worry, you know I'm gonna catch you up. And, it's a and after all your half square triangles for block of the week, you've got a week off. I've only got straight lines, we're doing a curvy log cabin. So it's a really nice simple block this week as well. But we're gonna watch this backpack being made now and we'll see you in a few minutes. Hello everyone, it's Cara here. I'm so pleased to be here and to share with you um, a wonderful retro backpack, which is here, which is lovely, <laughs> um, from this book, Bags, by Anna Alicia. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous book. Um, there's so many different books in there. There's 18 different patterns within the book. And to be honest, I could have actually made any of them. Um, they are so, so nice with the fabrics and everything. You've got all the information about the bag making in there. And the patterns actually are really usually just rectangles. But for this particular bag, there are some shapes. So we've got the blue line here, which is the retro backpack. And if you just have a little look here, there's a couple of arrows or three arrows there and this is where the pattern actually matches. So you've got the blue outline there. Then you've got this straight edge here with the three arrows and that will match to the gold line here, which is the base of the bag, the back of the bag and the front of the bag. And there's three arrows there. So what I did, I was lucky, I was able to actually, oh, excuse me, able to actually photocopy them because I didn't have any paper at home um, and I didn't know where I was going to get any. So I actually just photocopied the, the pattern here. What you can do is you can trace it onto um, parchment, baking parchment or tracing paper or something like that. And then, um, I, as I say, I was able to um, scan and photocopy mine. And in fact, I, I did it in four pieces. But this is where the arrow matches. So you've got that line there and that's where you match. And then this 
is this part of the bag and the front and the back of the bag are exactly the same. So that's the pattern that you need. The rest of the actual fabric that you're going to be cutting out, it's going to be in rectangles and all the measurements and everything are included in the book. And this is um, where we've got all the information. So they'll run through all the different fabrics that you're needing and the other materials and things like that. So there's a beautiful chunky zip that I've been able to use here, a normal zip and then the cotton webbing and some D-rings and a sliding bar strap adjuster. And then um, she's very good at taking you through all the different templates and the different sizes. So, um, you know, she will tell you to, this is template A, and then you've got the rectangles that you're going to be cutting out here. And she sort of says, you'll decide which fabric you want as your accent fabric. So we've got this gorgeous, gorgeous B fabric here. And that's the one that I've used as the access fabric, accent fabric on um, th this particular bag. And on the one I'm going to demonstrate today, I've actually used the brown as the accent fabric. And then the lining fabric as well. So um, it runs through everything. You'll have quite a bit of um, the accent fabric left over. Um, and I did think, oh, I bet there's a smaller project in here that I'd be able to use that. So with the leftover fabric of the bees, I think I'm going to have a look through the book and see what else I can make. So without further ado, should we get started? Pop this one back here. Okay. So I just want to sort of show you a bit of the bag. And I'm going to run through in quite a lot of detail um, this lovely pocket, because when I first looked at it, I thought, goodness me, how am I going to do that? It's got these lovely sort of box corners and there's a little zip underneath here. And so you've got this flap that goes over and covers the zip. It makes it look really, really professional. Um, and then you're sewing this actually to the fabric. Um, then you've got your cotton canvas around here. And this is where you've got your lovely chunky zip, which goes all the way around. And then you've got your accent fabrics at the side there. And then we've got the cotton webbing. It just looks so good, doesn't it? Um, with adjustable straps. So I'm going to um, start with the pocket on the front, um, explain about attaching the zip there, and also the webbing on the back. And we'll see how far we get, shall we? So I'll pop this back on. Ooh. And then we'll get started. I move this out of the way. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Okie dokie. So we've got um, the main part for the actual pocket. And it's a large rectangle that you're going to fold in half like that and pin the shorter ends. So this is the main pocket for the actual backpack. And I like the way that she does and explains how to do the pocket to make it sort of really neat and everything. You've also got the pocket flap here as well. And again, that's a rectangle that you um, fold in half and we're going to stitch a centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam along either side and then we'll look at doing the zip. So I'll take that to the machine and get that stitched. Um, oh, got the zipper foot on there, don't need that yet but I will do need that uh, a little bit later. Okay and what I've done is I've actually chosen a thread that will um, stand out quite nicely on the um, the pocket um, because you can do some top stitching and make it really nice. So I've used this lovely burnt orange thread, but you can choose your thread to either match or contrast your fabrics. So we just want to do a centimetre seam along those short edges. Um, haven't used this machine for a little while, so I'm just remembering. Um, just do a couple of stitches going forward and backwards, but later on we'll see um, you're going to actually cut into those um, corners and you won't, when you've made your seam, it won't come undone. 
Okay. So we do that for all four seams. And as I say, this cotton fabric is really, really nice, this um, canvas. It's, I thought it would be quite heavy. I thought it would be quite, um, you know, difficult to stitch, but it's a lovely soft feel. And again, with the actual backpack, although we don't include any interfacing or um, wadding or anything or H640, if you want to, if you want to make your um, backpack actually a little bit sturdier, you can, but the one that I've got here, I haven't actually used any of that. So um, this fabric's really nice to keep its shape and everything and is quite firm. So just get rid of those. So we've got two seams there, so the centimetre seams. I'm just going to do the same with the pocket flap. Well, this isn't as noisy as my machine at home. It's lovely. I've never made a backpack before, so this was my first one. So um, I'm really, really pleased with it. So as I say, it's a really, really nice pattern to follow. And um, you get a very professional sort of finish to it, which is nice. So just the final one. And then the next stage is actually you're going to fold over about a centimetre and you're going to press the raw edges, so the long edges, just to show you here, bring the iron and iron board in. So I've done my two seams, both ends, okay, and then you're going to turn this through, I'm going to just clip the corners, just so that it makes it easier to turn, get rid of some of the threads, and the same here. Then turn that through. Um, you can use, I've got some paper scissors here that haven't got very sharp point and that helps push that through. Same on this one. Just poke the corners out so it gives it a nice sharp sort of finish. And if you're using something like, um, you know, you can use a chopstick or these blunt scissors are really good. I wouldn't tend to go with pointy scissors because there is a tendency for those to come through. So we've gone all the way through there and just press that down. I like this little iron as well, which is really nice. I've got an ironing board on the floor at home, so I have to kneel on the floor, just a little one where I'm doing my sewing. And uh, that's fun. <laughs> right, let's just check that that's come all the way out. Oh, I didn't poke that one out so well. Okay. And as I say, it really is a very, very easy project and the only thing that I would say that you just need to take a little bit of time is when you're actually going to attach the pocket to the bag. So the next bit you're going to actually turn down a centimetre. So you're going to turn down a centimetre. I've opened the seam up like that and then you're going to turn about a centimetre down, just approximately, and you're going to iron that, press it all the way round. I think I might need to put this up a little bit higher. Temperature. Oh, 
I love the colour. This is such a nice colour, this bright orange. And, you know, if you've got um, a child going back to school soon, then this is a really, really nice sort of um, backpack for them. And they certainly won't lose where they've put it, will they? If it's um, got those beautiful bees or this beautiful bright colour. Or maybe for the gym, taking your um, items to the gym. Or, I, I, you know, if you're going on, um, hopefully soon, a sewing retreat or something like that you'll be able to use the bag to put all your sewing things in. So now I've actually pressed under the centimetre. We're going to stitch along the edge there. Let's get rid of the loose threads. Again, just press it together. And same with this one. So open the seams again. Turn that under about a centimetre. Now the zip that we're going to use is a nylon zip and we will be trimming it down because we'll be adding some tabs at the end of um, the zip to make sure that it's the right length for the pocket. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We'll just get this done. And as I say, um, my one, I didn't use any interfacing, but you would, if you were going to use interfacing, you would do the interfacing on the actual bag. I don't think you'd need it on the pocket. Okay. Then just press that down. And again, we're going to just machine along the edge. Okay, leave that again in a minute. So, and as this is going to be um, on the top, I'm going to lengthen the stitch to, I think I'm going to go to a three um, because when we stitch this to the outside of the bag, it will be shown. So we want to be sure that um, it's a nice decorative stitch. Just take your time getting started because you're going through quite a few um, layers of fabric. And then just top stitch that edge together. So that's the flap, top stitched, I'm going to do the same with the other pocket, the actual pocket itself. And again, you've got quite a few layers there, so just take your time when you're getting started. Um, if you find it easier, you could use some um, leather needles or needles for stitching leather or something like that. Um, if you think that's going to make it a bit easier to get through all those layers. So we're just top stitching that. Okay. Oh, I'm making a lovely mess here, aren't I? <laughs> Let's pop those to one side. So there we've got our top stitch on the pocket itself and then on the flap. Now that's how the actual pocket will go and you'll have your zip going in between the two. So you can see that your zip's a lot longer than the actual um, pocket itself but don't worry because it's a nylon zip you're going to be able to trim that down. So what we'll do is we'll take these little bits that you've cut out previously and these are your tab, your zip tabs. So we're going to just fold those over like that and then fold it again and that's going to enclose the end of your tape 
of your zip and then do the same with the other one. I actually for this particular project I found that I used a friction pen um, to mark where I needed to mark and um, we're going to be looking at the centre of parts of the actual bag and everything and it just means that when you do iron it those marks disappear so a friction pen's really good. I've got one somewhere just here so that's really nice. So what you want to do I'm going to put the zip down just a little bit and you're going to be putting this over the end of the actual tabs there. Pop a pin in. Make sure that your centers join and then we want this zip which will go in like that. I'm going to just pop a little mark. So I'm going to be trimming my zip to here, but don't sort of cut it yet. You want to be sure that you've got that in the right direction. So we're going to be putting that over there. So you actually want your zip, the, the fabric, the tab, to go where you've put that mark. So I'm going to cut my zip. Don't pull it apart. If you feel a bit nervous about doing this, um, you can, before you do that, machine over the end. But if you're very careful, you can just add that there. Pop a pin in just to hold it. And again, just check that's the right size. We're going to be using it there. So that looks all good. So I'm going to machine down that side, machine down that side, and then we're going to use this folded edge and we'll be actually machining the zip in there like that, okay? So very carefully, especially on that end where we've trimmed, pop your needle down and we're just going to, again, I've left it on the top stitching, um, and pop my needle down and then just machine across there. Take your time because you're going over the plastic teeth of the actual zip. And there's no need to go backwards and forwards because the zip's going to be enclosed. So, let's get rid of that. Okay, then we do the same on the other tab. Just move your zipper pull out of the way. And again, carefully take your pin out and you want to hold your zip together. And just machine over that edge. So that's our tab in place. So you've got your tab and you've got your zip there and that opens nicely. So with the folded edge of the pocket, you pop that just inside the zip there. And in fact, what I found was it was easier just to use some of these wonder clips just to hold it in position. So we'll just hold that there and you're going to put your zipper foot on your machine to sew the zip in place. So I'm going to be stitching that way. So my zipper foot be on that side. Put that down, that should go in position. So we've got our zipper foot on and this is where you've got quite a few layers of fabric. So you've got your layers on the actual pocket and then you've got four layers on the zip. So this is where just take your time or as I say if you've got some leather needles or needles um, you know for leather for the machine then that's a good time to use it because you are going through quite a few layers. So um, we'll just go down, do a few stitches forward. 
If you need to, you can lift your foot up and just move your fabric slightly. And on this one, I'm leaving it on the top stitch um, because again, I think it gives a nicer finish. So we're just going through, as I say, very, very carefully through all those different layers. And then once you get through those layers, you can just match the edge of the foot with the folded edge of the actual zip, um, the folded edge of the fabric. So I'm just going to put my needle down, lift that up and then move the tab out of the way. Okay. So carry on to the end. Do a few stitches backwards just to secure everything in position. Oops. Just cut some of the threads off. Okay, so there's your zip. So it's all been put in beautifully um, into position with those lovely tabs at the end. Okay, now the next part is you're going to actually put the flap over the top. And if you can see, you're going to actually overlap the flap by about a centimeter. And again, I found it much easier just to pop a wonder clip in. And you want to do the same the other side. Now you're going to be machining and you're going to be machining along here. Okay. And if you look, you can see that actually when I'm putting my nail down there, you can see that's where the teeth of the zip underneath is. So you will actually be stitching along this line. If you wanted to, you could make a mark with your friction pen or you can just take your time and machine along there. The way that I've got the um, zipper foot on, I'm actually going to stitch it that way. And when you come to the zip tab or pull, zip pull, you can pull that out of the way when you're machining. So we're going to start here and machine down there. Again, I'm leaving it on the longer stitch. And you can use your eye to sort of see where you're going and use your finger and the, the zipper foot actually sits quite nicely in there. So we'll just do a few stitches to get started. Go back again. And then you can see where the fabric actually, where I've put the nail, my nail down. Just going to machine along there, coming to where the zip pull is. Just going to move that out of the way. With my needle down, that's keeping everything together while I move that out of the way. And on some of the machines, the, um, the foot will come up a little bit higher if you need it. So again, I'm still going to carry along, along there. Take my clip out of the way. So that has made your start of your pocket. So you've got your zip underneath there, you've got the flap over the top that covers it, and you've got all your nice top stitching. So the next bit is to work out how to do, I'll just grab this over again. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to have a look and see how we make these box corners like that. And this is very, very easy and straightforward. So um, I'm going to make a mark two centimeters by two centimeters. And we're going to trim that fabric away. And you do that in all four corners. So. And we're going to cut just 
just roughly cut that. And as I said to you before, don't worry too much about the corners because we are going to actually get rid of those. So we'll just put that across there. Same again here. So two centimeters by two centimeters. Okay. So just cut, just take your time again. You're going through quite a few layers of fabric and you just cut the two centimeter square out of the corner there. I will do um, one of the corners for you so that I can show you, but I have actually done another pocket and I already attached it to one of the back pieces so we can get on to another part of assembling the bag. So those are the corners out. Okay. Then you take the corners and you just fold it over, pop a clip in, and then you'll be sewing one centimetre across like that. So again, take your corners, fold it over, pop a clip in, same here. And this is such a good way of doing a three dimensional pocket. So, you know, there's plenty of space in this pocket for putting maybe your keys, your glasses, sunglasses. This would be lovely to take on a beach, wouldn't it? Um, OK, so that's how you do your corners. I'm going to machine now one centimetre across there. Change the foot. And because this is going to get a little bit of wear and tear, I'm going to um, put, let's pop that clip back there. I'm going to pop the um, stitch length down again to 2.4 rather than 3. Um, so it makes it nice and secure. Let's do one of the bottom ones. So again, about a centimetre. Cross, do your locking stitches, just a few stitches in the other direction. And then what you will do is trim that corner, trim the corner. You can do zigzag as well to neaten it. And then all you do is just poke this through. Got a lovely poking tool here, thank you. You poke that through and that gives you that lovely three-dimensional pocket. Okay, so that's how you put your pocket together. And as I say, I've actually done one here already and already attached it to the bag, to the backpack. And once you've done all those four corners, You'll then um, measure up, it's 4.5 centimetres and in the centre of the bag there and you'll just carefully pin your pocket in position. Try and make sure that the sides are straight. You don't want it to flatten out, you want to keep that three dimensional feel to the pocket and then very, very carefully you will be machining all the way around and this is where I said about top stitch, your um, length of three, and with the contrast colour, it's really nice to just pop that all the way round and you're going to attach that then to the actual backpack itself. And that's your zip. So that's a really, really nice way of um, doing a pocket. So I hope that's been helpful. I know um, when I first read the instructions, I thought, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But if you take the instructions just a step at a time and just work through um, each step very carefully, it really does make it a lot, lot easier. And I hope this has helped you as well. So the next thing, um, you'll have your two side pieces. 
So the side panels of the actual bag, you'll have your contrast colour and your inner fabric. And then these are stitched just matching the edges. And again, just a centimetre seam there. So I'm just going to um, pop this on the machine and machine this other side for you. So this is just the side panels. And in fact, when um, you come to do the lining, it's very, very similar for the lining. And then we'll move on to doing the big zip. So just a centimetre seam, You'll, you will have folded those fabrics over together and top stitched at the top, I'll show you in a minute. And that again gives a really nice sort of finish. So when you've put your two pieces of fabric together, you can do a top stitching. When you've folded your centimetre over, you can do your top stitching along the edge there. And as I say, that gives a really nice finish to the bag. So we've done the two side panels here. I'll just press that. And the next bit we're going to do is the big zip over the top. So we're going to do the zip that will go over the curve of the actual backpack. So that's this part here. So you've got this zip panel here and you can see here's the actual um, top stitching on both side panels there. Okay, so this again is a lovely sort of way of doing the zip. Um, so you'll take your zip panels, you'll fold them in half and press. matching the raw edges. And the same on the other panel. Okay. Pop that to one side. So you take your zip with the right side up and this one we're not going to be trimming at all. This is a really, really nice chunky zip and where you've folded your fabric, it, the folded edge is going to go along the edge of the zip there. I'm going to just put a couple of clips in just to hold it in position. You can put pins in um, but because it's quite firm, this zip, it doesn't move around a lot. And then you can put your other piece on the other side like that. And you want the zip to be a feature. So you will be showing the teeth. So you will want a gap in between the actual two pieces. So what we'll do is just machine this. Change the machine to a zipper foot and again because it's quite a firm um, and this is going to get quite a lot of wear and tear I'm going to leave it on the shorter stitch length um, for strength but you've got two the two pieces there so if it was um, a fabric that had a pattern on the um, outside you'd actually have the raw the raw the wrong side on the inside and then the pattern part would be on the outside. So change the zipper foot again. Oh, I'm making a lovely mess here. <laughs> I hope somebody's going to come and clean it up or I will. <laughs> Move that out of the way. There we go. So pop that down. There we go. So we're just going to machine down one side of the zip, move the clip out of the way and 
I'll just pop the foot down just to hold it in position. You're going to be about sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch away from the actual edge of the zip tape. Let's move that over slightly. And I love the fact on the machine that you can actually match the edge of the um, zipper foot to the edge of the fabric, which makes it really easy to stitch. Okay. So we'll come along here. And as I say, we're going to make a feature of the zip, so we're not worried about the teeth of the zip showing. Just gonna lift the foot and move that out of the way. This makes it a lot easier to keep that line nice and straight. And then we'll do exactly the same down the other side. Just take your time when you get to the bottom because it's a little bit thicker zip tape there. So we'll just machine down the other side. needle down, move the tab. I'm going to lift my foot up a little bit higher. Some of these machines allow you to do that. Just to get that through. Pop the foot down. Okay, so we've now machined down either side of the zip and you can see that makes a lovely feature of that zip panel. The next stage is to take your bag front and we're going to mark halfway on the zip panel, do it on the wrong side and then fold this in half and you want your center point there and then you'll match those two together and because this is a curve it's a straight edge with a curve I find it much much easier to to do it with some clips just to hold it in position And you want the zipper panel to overlap the side panels. So when we go round, you want that, I can show you here, to overlap by about a centimetre. And you want it to overlap on the wrong side. So we'll just pop a couple of clips in here. And it may mean that you're going to have to 
ease this, because it's a curve and a straight edge, you're going to ease that round to make sure that it lies nice and flat. We'll do the same on the other side. And as I say, just popping those clips in just holds the fabric together. But as you're machining, you'll be able to move things around a bit. So we're going to overlap by about a centimetre, just approximately. And then just ease that curve into that straight edge. OK, so the next bit is you're going to machine. So you're going to machine all the way along here. And again, use your normal stitch length because this you want this to be very firm. And if I show you on this side where we've overlapped, that means that that side panel is going to overlap the zipper panel there. And once we have machined that, you'll be hemming that along that straight edge. So I'll take it to the machine and just do the stitching there. Change your foot. And a centimetre seam again. And just remove the clips as you get to them. As I say, we want an overlap of about a centimetre. And it's nice to do a backwards and forwards stitch just to secure that nice and securely. And then you'll find that the curve, you need to actually ease the straight edge. So you'll be easing the straight edge round, matching the straight raw, uh, the raw edges. So just take your time. And as I say, it's the straight edge that you want to ease round. So we've actually attached the zip panel to the front of the bag and what we're going to do next is look at the back of the bag with the webbing before we actually assemble it together. The webbing's a lot, lot easier than you think. Again, I've never done anything like this before. I've, I've made bags before, but um, not with cotton webbing like this onto a backpack. I was thinking, oh gosh, that looks like it's going to be difficult, but it wasn't, it wasn't at all. It was really, really easy. So just move those out of the way. You're just matching the raw edges and easing the fabric round. And having an overlap. Don't worry if you find that you've actually got more overlap on one side, it doesn't matter because you'll be able to, you'll be, you'll be um, stitching that in position so that's absolutely fine. I love this rose bowl, this is lovely. Um, but it's magnetic so everything seems to be here. Uh, attaching itself to it. Just got a little bit of a, a pleat there, but um, usually you'll be taking a lot more time to do this. Um, but sometimes it's quite nice to have something like that. So that just shows you how you can attach that side panel. So we need to move on to the back of the bag now with the actual webbing. Um, Pop that to one side because we'll come back to it, that in a moment. So the cotton webbing, um, if you get a metre, it states a metre actually in the um, list of suggestions. And um, it does mean that actually that you're going to be cutting from one metre 
you're going to be cutting a piece of um, webbing 10 centimeters, then 13 centimeters, and in the instructions it says 80 centimeters. Well, with my maths, which sometimes does go a bit astray, um, so you've got 10 centimeters plus 13 is 23, and if you take that off a meter, that actually only leaves 77 centimeters. So I'm having somebody nod in the corner going, yes, that's right. <laughs> um, so I felt that it was better when you've got your meter of um, webbing, you actually cut your um, four, sorry, four in 10 centimeters, 13 centimeters, and then whatever you've got left is the rest of the actual strap for the back. I hope that makes sense. Um, right, so again, what you're going to do is you're going to mark the centre with your friction pen, the centre of the bag there, centre of the bag four and a half centimetres down, and then I put a line across there just so it made it a lot, lot easier for me. And you take your first piece of 13 centimetres and you fold under a centimetre either end. So you want the centre of that 13 centimetre piece, fold under your centimetre either end and pin it. You're only going to pin it at this stage. Okay, then you'll take your other piece of, just checking, the other piece of the 13 centimetre and you're going to fold it into the tab and if you fold it like that you can see on the back of the bag take that down again sorry that's the tab that you're going to be making so you're folding it that's the 13 centimeter one and you're folding it to make that sort of shape okay pop it over here <laughs> and once you folded that you're going to drop those raw edges underneath the actual tape that you've got already on the bag so you're going to drop that under like that pop a pin in now the short pieces are for the piece at the bottom so we take our D rings and you thread this through. There, is, um, there are two sides to the actual um, tape. I'm not sure if you can see that. That looks more woven. If I turn it over, that looks more knitted. So it's up to you whether you want to actually have them exactly the same or whether you want to um, alternate. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So one side looks more like knitting and the other side looks more like a woven part. I've chosen the outside to be like the knitting. So you'll pop your D-ring in there. And then fold it. So just four centimeters. And mark just there. And then you'll pop that like that. And we're going to just machine over the ends there just to make that nice and secure. And in fact, I found that it was better to do a couple of rows of machining because although this is going to be within the seam, you do want this to have be really, really secure and really strong. So we'll just machine along there, normal stitch length, and you want it to be within the seam allowance because you don't want these stitches to show. And as I say, it's quite good to do it twice even three times to make sure it's nice and secure. Same on the other side. Okay. 
so that's secured your bottom of your webbing. Get rid of some of these ends. So that's those nice and secure. So then you've got your longer piece of your webbing and you will actually be popping it in at the top. And you can overlap these depending on how accurate you've been with your measurements and things like that. So you can overlap that, pop a pin in there, make sure it doesn't get twisted. I'll do this other side and then I can show you how. So we've got that bit there. How you then put it on the slider. So we've secured that nicely at the top, just with some pins at the moment. And then what you're going to do is take your piece of webbing and I've wanted the knitted side out so I'm making sure it's not twisted. You pass that through the D-ring. Oh no, pass it through the slider. I knew I'd the and you're going from the back to the front of the slider and then over like that. Okay. Then you're going to pass this through the D-ring. There's a very clear photograph in the book as well, which will help you, but I'm hoping that this will help you. Then once you've passed it through there, you're going to pass it back through the center of the slider, like that. From front to back. And again, you can actually let me make sure that there's plenty of the webbing there. So I've passed it through from the front to the back over that center part of the slider. Pull it through and then you pass it back through there like that. And then about six and a half centimeters. You'll allow extra to overlap. And then you're going to turn under about a centimetre. Just take a tape measure. It's a bit longer than six and a half centimetres there. I'm just going to pull that back. So it's about four centimetres. As long as they match as best they can, pop a pin in there. like that. Just double check. You can see this one I've already pinned that side. So they're roughly the same, but don't worry if they're not exactly the same. And what we're going to do is actually machine across here to secure it. Okay, so I'm going to machine both of those to make sure that that's nice and secure. In fact, that one's the wrong way around. I'm just going to redo that. As I say, just take your time. And as long as you're just pinning, then um, it shouldn't be a problem. So actually go from the back at the top of the slider, not the bottom. And then pass that back through the slider again. Trim off any excess. I've got some excess webbing there that's fraying. So then just pull that back, turn that under. It just makes it all nice and neat and secure. So what we're going to do is we're going to machine across there and we're going to machine across there. And then the next stage is machining all the way around here. So I'm going to take this to the machine now and do that. And I'll see you back here in a moment. 
so um, I'm just sewing around the top of the tape now and you'll just take your time along the top of the tape there make sure that your folds are still in position and just leave your needle down to turn the machine uh, the fabric round not the machine round that would be weird and I'm just going to overlap the stitches so it's nice and secure if you want to again this is going to get quite a lot of um, wear and tear and in fact I think I might be tempted if I was to do this again I might be tempted to actually um, put some iron-on interfacing on the back so if you see on the back there I'd be tempted to put a piece of iron-on interfacing on the back there just to make it a little bit more secure but all I've done is I've just machined all the way around that strip there and then you can see lots of lovely ends of thread and um, you can see that's where we've machined or I've machined and that's where I've machined the actual folded over webbing for the back of the backpack and this works really really well so you can make it shorter or longer depending on who's carrying it and what's comfortable for you and because it's nice and wide this cotton webbing it does make it nice and comfortable um, so that looks really really good doesn't it okay so that's all your webbing done on the back the next stage is to actually assemble the rest of the bag so we've done the front part that we looked at earlier so now we're going to just going to show you going to pin or clip the fabric here so this is the other side of the bag so I'm going to machine along there one centimeter and to put this other piece there let's clip it again and then again you want to mark your center of your zip panel with your friction pen or a fabric pen of some sort just put that down there and then the halfway mark on the back we've already got a mark there because of the webbing so you'll match those two and we'll come all the way around again you just maybe need to just take a little bit of time to make sure that you're e easing things around and again you want that overlap by about a centimeter there so this this just holds the fabric together but you'll take your clips out as you're machining so we've got the other side about a centimeter so I'm going to take this to the machine and I'll show you the parts that I'm going to machine so that's the front of the bag this is the back of the bag so I'm going to machine all the way up attaching the side panel there then all the way around the curved edge and then down the other side once I've done that you'll be inserting your base and again I'll just show you how you insert your base but I'll take it off to the machine and do that and then I'll bring it back to show you but you'll be putting your base in matching the seams and everything and you'll be machining all the way around before you do that please 
make sure you've got your zip open because there's nothing worse than actually doing all of that and then thinking, hold on a minute, I haven't got a hole here to poke it all the way through. So what you'll do is you'll open the zip slightly so that you'll be able to turn it the right way around. So I'm going to take that to the machine now and I'll come back and see you in a moment. Right, so I'm just finishing off the um, base. I've stitched all the way around the edges and I'm just, as I say, finishing off the base, going from corner to corner. What you can do with the bag is if you've got an overlocker or just do zigzag, um, you can neaten the raw edges of the inside of the bag, the actual bag itself, um, which is nice. And as I say, I did remember to open the zip there. So um, I'm going to just show you how you can finish off. Um, I've made the base, the base, the lining in exactly the same way as we did with the side panels and the base like that. And you'll turn that so you've got your wrong side on the inside and you've got your right side outwards. And then you'll put the wrong side of your bag into the lining like that. And to finish it off, we will have hand stitched already. Do you remember I mentioned about the side panels and the zip panel? You will have hand stitched that already across there. And you're going to match the actual lining to the inside of the bag like that. And then you'll fold very carefully and pin all the way round the actual bag. So we're folding and pinning and then we'll hand stitch. So you'll actually hand stitch the lining to the bag. Um, if you've got a few hours, I can do it now, but <laughs> unfortunately I think we're going to run out of time. So I'm so sorry about that. But as I say, you'll be folding that and covering the raw edges, pin it, and stitch it. And then what I want to do is just turn this the right way round and show you how gorgeous this is, even though it's not finished properly yet. But as I say, this, this colour is just so lovely. And you've got a very, very professional backpack there. As I say, you will have stitched across there, hand stitched, hand sewn across that part and across that part there and then inserted the lining and you're left with a beautiful backpack. Isn't that fab? So thank you so much. As I say, this book is just incredible. There's so many different patterns in there, so many different ideas and I know I'm going to be making a few more from here. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope I see you again. Well, I know I could definitely do that. Cara, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for that demonstration. So thorough. And what a gorgeous um, backpack. Here it is here. I'm absolutely loving that. So you've got that lovely colorway there. Have we called this, what have we called this colorway? The vintage colorway, isn't it gorgeous? And we've obviously got our B colorway as well. So let me recap the bundles that you're going to get. So each of these bundles, you're gonna get the fabulous book. And this is the book, this is the one that Cara demoed, and I'm hopefully gonna be able to get that to stand up. So if I put that there, actually, just to annoy Joe's camera shot there, you're gonna get two meters of the webbing. Um, is that gonna stand? Not throw the book over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, we'll see how we go. And then obviously you're getting your strap adjusters here. You're getting two of those all the way through all of the bundles. Oh, and as if by magic, thank you very much. I've got something to prop that up with. Um, and then you're getting, sorry. If I'd taken the time to set this up beforehand. So you're getting two meters of your webbing. And then of course these aren't gonna line up. It can't be easy. You're obviously getting these adjustable strap, strap adjusters. Um, and these D-rings, you're going to get four D-rings for all of the bundles that you're going to be able to get. 
There you go. Right, so those are what you're getting as a standard. That's in every bundle that you're going to get. What's going to change per bundle? Oh, oh, come on. There you go. Stay. Obviously, when you get this home, you, and I'm going to use the early bird and tip it upside down just to hold it up there. I'm going to turn it upside down. There you go. So that's it. You're getting not getting the early bird. You're getting those two together then. And then what will change in each of these is the colorways that you're getting. So this is the colorway, the vintage colorway. You're getting half a meter of the canvas, half a meter of this beautiful brown, half a meter of the lemon. The canvas, um, this orange is a canvas uh, weight, and these are 100% cotton. You're getting, uh, this is the one that was demoed, so that is going to be $28.99, so that's for the vintage colourway. Now, the, I'm not surprised, I'm hearing that this is now, without question, our most popular colourway, and it is single figures. So I'm going to show you these two are the cottons that go with it, and I'm going to remind you of just how absolutely exquisite this fabric is. Look at that. And I'm so, so sad. I can't get it by... I can't, so we're going to have to go through and get this. We're down to single figures on that now. And you get to enjoy it, not me. And that's the way it should be. You enjoy it. It's the way it should be. So these are the, 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 the... You might lose out on these because we're down to single figures. You're getting that wonderful half metre of canvas, that gorgeous fuchsia, and the light... Is that light pink or pink? We're going to call it light pink. It's probably not light pink, but that's what we're going to go with. So you're getting a metre and a half of fabric and that whole bundle there, not the early bird. That's just to prop everything up. Again, that's £28.95. And that's the one that's proving to be the most popular today. Um, but don't, don't, let's forget about our gorgeous B combination. So this is the bag that you'll make with the B combination there. You've got that stunning B fabric there. This gorgeous mustardy um, olive uh, canvas and it feels beautiful and we've got this lovely grey lining uh, in there as well polyester filling not included and that is all available then to you as well also for £28.99 you're getting a half meter of each of these these are 100% cotton and then you're getting a half meter of this gorgeous mustardy um, olive color uh, so you're getting a meter and a half in total for that so you're getting that whole bundle there for £28.99 oh, sorry why is that a different price? Different fabrics. Sorry, that's why. See, I get confused because if I go to price in my head and see a different one, I'm like, what? Well, have I done something wrong? Did I get the other prices right? Perfect. Just checking. Don't want to give you the wrong prices in that. So such a great deal. The fabric's on their own and all these wonderful little things that go with it. Fabulous deal there. But you're also getting this incredible book with it as well. So that is a really, really great book there. Lovely projects. There are 18 of them, were they? 18 different book projects there. Really, really fabulous. And of course, if you just want the book on there on its own, that's available as well for eleven ninety nine. Now, there were things that Cara used in her demonstration as well. So we're going to ask you to just check these out on the web as well in case you haven't found them. Um, if you're looking at the zips, there are two different zips here. So we've got this, got the smaller zip here. So if you want to search all of these, um, because the, de the demos run a little bit longer, if you just go into our search bar there and search zip, you'll be able to see the different zips that we've got available for you there. Um, she also used our fabulous Wonder Clips. These are a pack of 10 of the Wonder Clips. We've got them in packs of 10, as well as boxes of 50. And you know I love my boxes of 50. So have a check for those for the Wonder Clips. We've also got this fantastic concealed zipper foot by Janome. So if you just type in Janome on the website, all the products coming in from Janome, you'll see we've got a lot of wonderful products that. 10 o'clock, uh, this foot will pop up as well, so you'll be able to do that. And then lastly, you've got the iron-on interfacing as well. Iron-on interfacing I know is quite hard to come by at the minute as well, so type on interf type interfacing into the search bar and that will all come up for you. We've got our fabulous block of the week, um, so we're running a little bit late. So we're going to have a little short break to redo the set. Make sure you check out the website. And if you've got anything in your basket at the moment, especially if you're looking at one of these bundles, do check out your basket now. You've only got the one day three, the 395 one day P&P. We don't want you to lose out on if you're wanting this wonderful colorway here for the fuchsia. Um, there are down to single figures on that, so we don't want you to lose out. So make sure you check your basket out. And we'll see you in a minute, a minute, few minutes. We've got block 10 after this, and I promise no half square triangles. 
Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved and it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. I kind of want to burst into song. Block of the week! Welcome everybody, thank you so much. I know we're running a bit behind. We've got that fabulous demo on earlier from Cara. From Cara. And I know lots of you have been checking out the block and, and everybody's got all that as well. So if you haven't got your block yet, make sure you pop it in your basket, check out, and then it's done. Get your cup of tea, biscuit. There are no half square triangles. Probably because the last two are quite terrifying and that you're gonna need a lot of biscuits for. So order those in advance for next week. I am so excited about this project. I can't believe we've been going for 10 weeks. Really, really excited. So if anybody has joined in or hasn't joined in, you've still got time. We've got bundles. You can get all 10 blocks in one bundle. Everything that you might have missed out on so far, you can order it all in one giant bundle and it'll all arrive. All of the videos that we've done to, to show you exactly how to each block has all the separate videos all on our YouTube page. So make sure you check out YouTube, type in Sewing Street, it'll come up there. Make sure you subscribe and every time something gets uploaded, you'll be able to get notified about that as well. And we've had 445,000 views of all of our videos on our Facebook, on our YouTube page at the moment. Very, very exciting. If you haven't taken part before, what happens is each week, you're gonna get a pattern, a set of instructions. You're also gonna get a wonderful panel so this is our block 10 panel. This is in the brights colorway. You'll be able to then get that as your colorway then. We've got three different colorways available to you. This one's the brights. <clears throat> and the brights colorway is the one behind me. This is proving really, really popular as well. We also have then 
Me? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> With talkback, I, I need to remember I'm talking to you, they're talking to me late. Sorry about that. Now we have our blues colourway as well. So each week you're going to get this wonderful pack of instructions. Um, really easy to use and you're getting the colourway here, you're getting a big panel. Let me show you what the blue panel looks like and all the panels are the same. Um, each one comes exactly the same, so it shows you just how much fabric you're getting each week. And you'll be able to see then each and every single week you're going to get that much fabric. And it's a really lovely way to be able to get this. This is now block 10, so each week we've had a different sized panel. So some weeks we've had a little bit more of fabric 4, some weeks we've had a little bit more of fabric 3. So each week they're slightly different to make sure that you've got enough fabric to be able to make the block. Um, and you've always got a little bit left over um, and that's what I love is those little leftover bits that you can make whatever project you like with it So this is now block 10 But remember we've also got if you're joining in today for the first time We've got a bundle which is uh, blocks 1 to 10 So it's from the very beginning right up to date uh, You don't pay any more or any less for it. They're 11.99 So 10 of them are 111 pounds up uh, 119 pounds 90 So on that graphic on your screen at the moment you'll be able to see all of the blocks numbers uh, you can see number one, seven, and five in the first row. It's number four, three, and block 12. I know that's 12 because I've written the pattern for that. Um, and then the third row is block two, nine, and six. And then the last row is eight, and then number 11, and number 10. So 11 and 12 are still to come. And you can see we've got a lovely curvy log cabin coming to you today. Really, really lovely block that. Nice and easy for you to get through for that. Um, and then if obviously you've got the vintage colourway as well, vintage colourway, sorry that's our blue colourway over there and our vintage colourway has proved to be our most popular colourway, you can see why, it's absolutely beautiful um, and then you can buy block 10 for that individually as well. But you've also got the bundle as well for that later. But on your block 10, you're going to get the wonderful set of instructions and you're getting your panel. And those are both available there together for $11.99. You've got your $3.95 PNP all day. So it doesn't matter what you order throughout the day. Once you've paid that, everything else has got free postage and packaging. And don't forget this as well. We've also got bundles 1 to 10 available for you for £119.90. Not paying any more or any less for it. You just get it in one nice big bag and you can start all of them as you go. And every single video that we've done for all of the training uh, the tutorials of this project are all available on our YouTube page so you can go and have a look for that and you'll easily be able to catch up and uh, know exactly where you are you're not going to be out of sync in any way whatsoever and there are loads of you starting checkout already which I'm very very excited for and lots of photos. I love our fans page because the fans page shows me every time you post something um, and you're putting something on the fans page, I'm always looking out to see what it is everybody's up to, what everybody's doing. And um, then we can go and in interact with one another. And I love it because some of you are alternating the, uh, the way the pattern's gone. You've, uh, one lady, Jan Hill, popped her block on and she did her pieces the other way around. And I just thought, gosh, that's really clever. I love the way she did that. So it's really nice to be able to see what other people are doing. There's a nice social aspect of it as well. And as you're doing the blocks, if you've got any questions or queries, pop them on the Facebook page, Sewing Street Fans, or onto the Sewing Street TV page. And then if I don't get to you, the answer your question as me immediately normally there's two or three other people who've done the same thing and know exactly where they are so they're able to answer the questions as well so it's a really really lovely block this week as well I'm just looking for my finished block of block 10 we had them out on the desk boom, boom, boom. You know when you put somewhere something really safe and you cut it? I can't find them at the moment. So your block 10, this is now partly made for your block 10. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get to that point as well. So if you look at blocks numbers 6, 7 and 8, I think it was, you'll see I've shown you how to cut each one of your blocks each week. Um, and you're able to then go through. Perfect. So why don't I... Of course. What have I done with those blocks? So that's what we're going to make. That's where we're getting to there. That's going to be our block of the week that we're making for this week. So in the instructions, what I'm going to do is that the 
The middle bit is relatively self-explanatory. You need to understand how to start the beginning and to end it. So I'm going to start first of all, I'm not cutting out the whole block. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the first two or three blocks so that you know what it is that you're doing. Um, the first piece I'm going to cut out is from my white colorways. Now on all of these instructions that I've done each week, um, I have shown you what fabrics one, two, three, and four mean. Because when we wrote the pattern, we wanted to make sure that we were using colors one, two, three, and four, rather than pink, green, gray, white, because each time, each colorway is slightly different, and we didn't want to confuse people. So each one of the blocks of the week, we have called fabrics one, two, three, and four. And what's great about that is that you can refer to your colorway, and when you're using the colorway, make sure you cut it off on each of these, you'll see fabrics, there's fabric four written on there, in a little, um, we're calling that a bubble? In each bubble, it'll say fabrics one, two, three, and four. So what I do is I, and I'm gonna do this as a straight line simply because I know I need to cut a piece off. So what I do is I cut that off and then I take that and I attach it to my pattern where it says uh, fabric four. I put my fabric four there and I attach it to the side so that I know that that's my fabric four there. And you're able to then always know what fabric four is because if you don't get to finish the block immediately, you then get to come back to it later um, and you're able to then know exactly what it is that you're cutting out and how you're doing it. So I'm just cutting out the what's called fabric T, uh, cutting plan T now. And we're using these lovely new Janome rulers. I'm just gonna make sure I get that the right size. There we go. So those are my block T's. Now there are a lot of pieces to cut on this one. Don't be worried, it is fine. You can easily do all of these. It just takes a little bit more organization. There are nine, there are 19, uh, 20 steps in the pattern this week, but it's great because once you've done all those 20 steps, you feel so much better because you've understood exactly what you're doing. And just get little pieces of paper, put these on and label them as you go. It just makes your life that little bit easier. Um, and now I'm going to cut R and Q. So what I found worked really, really well on this is I cut long strips, the width of the fabric that I needed it to be. It just makes your life that little bit easier having that extra bit of fabric. Um, and then what you do is you trim it down. So this piece is the width, I, well, they're, they're all the width I need it. They've been in my bag, so I'm gonna give this a little bit of a press. And obviously don't forget our vintage colorway has proved to be the most popular of all of these. They've all been very popular. We're selling hundreds of them every week, which I'm so proud about. But it's great to see that the vintage is the best one um, because it's just nice to see what everybody likes color-wise. So what I've done is I've cut this whole strip the width that it needs to be. So when I come to be cutting number Q, I know that that needs to be this width. So I put my ruler on top of it and then I trim the off my next piece. So I know that's my next piece there. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm building up this little um, pile of fabric all the way along. Um, so that's that piece. Then the next piece, I know how much that needs to be. So I put my ruler along there. I know this is the correct width that I need it to be. So I'm just going to trim those off. And then that's my first section there. Then the next colorway that I'm doing, I know is my dark, um, my num fabric number four. So I'm just gonna cut those very quickly. Um, so that one is. And there we go, you're cutting that piece out. And that will be that section there. So you'll see exactly what I mean. And then what you do is once you've cut everything out, you then lay it all out into the square. I've just realized that's got a little bit of a, a fold in it. So the great thing is you just give it a nice little press. And it's pressing, not ironing. 
So if you're doing this and somebody comes up and brings a shirt to you and said, oh, and that's it, I only press, sorry, no. Sorry for that. Oh, I could have used that other piece. See, I'm doing what everybody else is doing. I'm trying to save my fabric as much as I can. But you do end up with so much fabric in this process at the end. It's great. Uh, so, yes, right. So what you do then is you're going to cut out the whole load of instructions. All of the cutting guides are there to show you how you're doing it. But then what you're going to do is you're going to lay it out. And I lay this out in an anti-clockwise motion. So I know that's my centre square. So that one goes to that one, which goes to that one, which then adds that one. That looks too big. And it is. See, this is why we check. And that's what's really good, is that you lay these all out as you go, and you'll be able to see when you've made a mistake, because you, all you do then is you just trim off another piece. There we go. Because the number of times I've done this, and I'm like, nope, that's wrong, and that's great. Now I know that's the correct size, then I know that's the correct size, and then the next section I'm putting in is I'm putting that there, and then I'm putting that there, and then I'm putting that there, and I need to just double check what this next size is over here. And the great thing is, is you've got this wonderful diagram over here telling you where you are. So as you lay them all out, you can then know exactly which piece it is you're looking for. So as I repeat this, that's number T, that's number T, that's S, that's R, that's Q, that's P, that's O, that's N for November. And then I know I need to cut M for Mike. So that's where you're going around anti-clockwise. And then I flick back to my pattern and I look for number M for Mike. And I know that needs to be bigger than that. <laughs> and that's the great thing about cutting these all the same width is that you can then put these down, cut the size you want, double check that's the size you need. And it is. And there you go. And you just keep adding it on. And I know it doesn't look like very much at the moment. And I have to say, these Janome cutting mats and this ruler is really good. I've not used them before. So that's coming up at 10 o'clock, so you can see that. And then what you're doing is exactly like I showed you that I'm going in an anti-clockwise order. I'm going to sew those two together. So this is my central block, and that's on the left-hand side. So all I'm doing here is I'm doing this as a quarter inch seam. My stitch length is 2.4. You don't need it to be any bigger or smaller than usual, what works for you. Um, your quarter inch, again, I spoke a few times in the last couple of weeks about scant quarter inch. You're looking at one thread shorter, which is not a problem, one thread th shorter on that. Um, and I do press my seams open, especially in a log cabin. Uh, the main reason being is that that way, it is completely flat then. Um, and when you're sewing these pieces together, it's nice to have that wonderful flat seam. And I'll show you what I mean by that now. As you can see, that's completely flat there. And when I'm sewing that onto this, you should measure exactly the width there to there. So this is where we've been practicing our quarter inch all the way along. If you put this down and you can see that it doesn't line up almost exactly, go and look what you've done differently. Is it your seam allowance? Is it the way you've pressed? Is it the way you've cut? Because I do think that this log cabin is the perfect way of checking whether you've done it correctly because it just shows you It'll show where you've made a little error. It'll show where you've either cut too small or you've cut too big or you've um, pressed your seam a little bit too wide or however you've done it, you've distorted it potentially. But what you're looking for is to have a complete and utter perfect meeting of this larger piece with the two smaller pieces. And then again, you're pressing that open. And this block goes together really, really quickly as well. So the great thing is, is that if you haven't caught up on these and you've missed a little bit, you've been busy, they're always available. They're completely exclusive to Sewing Street. You're not going to miss out. We'll always be able to be, um, we've always got the fabric. They're exclusive to us. So don't worry, you can easily catch up. I hear that a couple of people are checking out on block nine. Fabulous. It's great to have you back in the process. Now, again, you can see that this fabric here 
is exactly the width of this one because we're going to do this in an anti-clockwise motion and that's perfect that's exactly what you're looking for is that this piece measures exactly that piece there and that is exactly what you're looking for again if it doesn't meet up completely that's okay just for your own knowledge and your own experience and your own improvement check why it's not lining up have a little look and if it is slightly out by say two or three threads what I would do is I would split the difference and put it in the middle of that and then hopefully by the next time round you'd have lost that little difference and nobody's going to notice it because it'll be buried in your seam allowance but you'll see again on this I tell you to press the seams open and the reason being is once you've pressed it open your block is a lot flatter and when I'm sewing now you can see I've sewn that bit on there when I'm sewing this bit on there as well you can see that's exactly lined up that's exactly what you're looking for but when I sew that on you can tell that's a really nice flat seam to get on because if you've got them sewn to one side you'll end up with a little bit of a lump now there's no problem there's nothing wrong with having a lump it's entirely up to you it doesn't mean your quilt is any better or any worse it just is what works best for you you need to just be comfortable with how you're doing it you're doing a quarter inch seam one thread shorter than a full quarter inch seam just to make sure that your fabric is exactly the same width and height as the next piece that you're adding to it. So as you can see, I've now added one, two, three. I'm on my third piece along the way here. I think this is now figure number four. So we're on uh, fig four here. And it's great because you've got the figures on the diagram of how you're going to put this together and which order you're putting it into. So you'll see on this page of the pattern, you've got this wonderful set of instructions. So that was sewing the first two together. That was the third, fourth. So this is where we are here. There, you can see that. So from the diagram, I know that my dark fabric is now going on the edge here. I'm keeping with that anti-clockwise motion and I'm checking that this is the same height as that. And it is, this is exactly, it shows my quarter inch seam is working beautifully. And it's absolutely, my cutting's right. Everything is perfect on that. And it's really, well, I shouldn't say that it's going to plan because that's normally when I kill a sewing machine and I can't get the block finished. But there we go, it's going brilliantly on that. And that's what you want when you're doing the process is those little moments where you're like, yes, it's exactly right, I'm so happy. And that's what you're looking for. And then you just, again, you press each stage as you go. As you can see this week, I've changed my setup on the set a little bit. I pushed all the things out the way and I've got my ironing board right in the middle. It just saves lifting up, lifting down. One less step in the process. What I would say is every time you are doing these steps, have your diagram nearby. Make sure you keep that in, in sight. The reason being, the number of times I've put that back in there and I've sewn that on there and three steps down the way, I'm like, what have I done? That doesn't make any sense. And then you're unpicking it. Always make sure you're putting it back in the picture. You're checking back to where you are. I've done number five. The dark is on the left hand side. That's right. Now I'm putting the dark to the top. Now I'm doing number six. And you can see the block comes together really, really quickly. Although there are 20 steps, you can see the block is coming in really quickly. Now, just here, I've noticed, if I pull this this way, you can see I'm two threads too short for this. And the reason being, look there, that one is thinner than that one. So I didn't have the fabric lined up perfectly. Now, it's absolutely fine. All you do is you line your fabric up and you split the difference. You can see I've got one thread sticking out there and I've got one thread sticking out there and that's how I'm going to sew it. That's how I'm gonna get rid of that little adjustment there. And that's not a problem, it's just a case if you hide it in the seam allowance. No one's gonna ever be able to see the back of your quilt and that's a nice little easy way of being able to hide it. You do not have to unpick anything, not for one thread. It's not worth it. You're gonna damage the fabric. It's just not worth it. And if you are gonna unpick, I would suggest you just cut yourself another piece of fabric. You've got more than enough there. It's just a lot easier because once you've unpicked the fabric, it does distort ever so slightly and that's just easier. Um, cutting that extra little bit of fabric, you won't end up with a little bow in your fabric and uh, your block and that, so it's just easier doing that. And having put that in the middle there by that one thread, I've completely lost 
the error, no one's going to know about it, and the next round it's completely covered, it's not even going to be noticeable. And by that I mean, as I lay this here, you can see I'm one thread short there and one thread short there, but if I put that over here and I sew my quarter inch down, you're not going to see it because it's on the back. So that's, and on the front, you don't notice it at all because it's buried in your seam allowance. So again, I've now done block six. I'm in number six over here. I make sure I line everything up exactly as it is per the picture. I'm now going to be attaching this little white piece onto there. That's my block seven. And all of this is written out in words as well, so you can follow that as well. And you can see that's perfectly lined up. I'm very happy with that. So I know that my seams are working on the whole, apart from that one little alignment that wasn't completely right. And there we go. And you just follow this on in that whole vein of making sure that each time you press, or you stitch something, you press your seams either to the left or the right or to the dark side, or you press your seams open. Personally, I press my seams open. I think it's a lot neater and it just makes your life that little bit easier when you come to do the blocks together and when you come to quilt it. But you do what works best for you. So you can see now that's my number seven. And I've cut that the wrong size, of course I have. So you'd then be cutting number eight and you'd keep going and keep going and keep going until you get to this point here. So this is now block 16, number 16. And you just follow that same way of going. So you can see that was where that was. You just put that bit on, that bit on, that bit on. You just keep going round, all the way around. And please tell me I didn't just cut up my... I did, didn't I? No, I didn't, did I? <laughs> I have a horrible feeling I've just cut up the fabric that I wanted to use for my demo, so just give me two seconds, <laughs> I did. How on earth did I do that right? Of course I did. So what I'm going to do now is I've cut that piece out by mistake, so bear with me while I just cut this out. It was going, I knew something would happen, it always does. It was going so perfectly, it's always the way. So this one is correct. Let me double check that. 14. Yes, that one is 14. And three. Yeah, yes, so that's that one there. Um, and then I need a 15 and a half. You'll do it too. We all do it. Right, so that one is there. And because we've kept these all the same width, all I'm doing now is I'm cutting that the width that I need it to be. So that's going to go there. And I know I've got loads of people that I know who are making this block have been doing this in multiple colorways, which I love. I think it's a really nice project to do. And I think it's lovely that people are doing the multiple colorways because it's just such a lovely quilt. I think it's a great thing that people are doing that multiple purchasing on that. Um, and just the last one here is 12 and 7 eighths. And what I love about this ruler, you're going to see this ruler in the next hour, is when you're cutting slightly darker fabric, you can see over here, the pink that the, uh, the details are in pops up against this dark colorway and it really, really works. It makes your life that little bit easier, this ruler, um, just when you're using slightly darker fabrics. So all you're going to do is you're going to imagine that that didn't happen and I just seamlessly flowed into my demonstration not having cut the pieces up that I needed. Um, and you're now going to sew. So I'm at this point now where I've now got to there, which is... So this is what I've got to do now. You're now at the point there, which is number 16, where at number 17, I'm going to sew that bit onto here. So all you're going to do exactly the same as you did previously, going in the anti-clockwise direction. You line your pieces up. You can see that the width of my darker fabric for fabric four matches up perfectly with what I need it to be. And all I'm going to do is I'm now going to push this through the sewing machine, quarter inch seam all the way down, one cotton thread short of a full quarter inch. So it's, I'm calling it a one thread scant quarter inch. I'm hoping you know what that means. And that's one thread away from it being a full quarter inch um, because then it should match up perfectly with the size you need it to be.
I thought people would enjoy the little break from half square triangles on this because we did ha have a little half square triangle overload for a couple of weeks there. But aren't they brilliant? I've been looking at all the work that you've been posting online. It's fantastic. It's really good. Now, I don't know if all of you follow our Instagram account. It's a wonderful little reference as well. Make sure if you are on Instagram that you follow us on Instagram at Sewing Street. Um, all of you like getting little previews of what's coming up. So tomorrow is National Sewing Day. And during the break, Hayley, uh, Hannah and I posted a wonderful little video of, um, in honor of National Sewing Day. So make sure you check that out in the story. So all I'm doing now is I'm adding the fabric now for the next piece, which is now figure 18. I'm doing exactly the same as I've done previously, adding that um, darker fabric to the top of this block. Make sure you're getting it in the right place. Ask me how I know. Oh, and my thread broke then, of course it did. And Jenny Raymond's going to pull my hair out because I'm loading this from the, oh no, hang on, I need to pull my, there we go. There we go. So being National Sewing Machine Day tomorrow, this lovely 550 that we have has had a lovely little bit of a clean. Opened it up and everything, so you'll see our nice little Instagram story there. So do check that out. It's a really, I think it was very cute. So hopefully you will as well. And if you don't, don't tell Haley. And that's Haley B, don't tell her. And there we go, so. That lines up perfectly. Oh, it did. Oh, and I'm pushing my pattern away with that. There we go. Oh, and there we go. Right. So now exactly the same thing again. I'm pressing my seams open all the way down. It's always important to shake your head when you're pressing, just in case, just in case. I don't know what I've done there. There we go. So we all know when we press, we've always got a little bit of a wobble in the middle. Um, so there we go. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing as we've done previously. We've done exactly that. We keep going in an anti-clockwise direction. We're now at number 18 because we've got both of our dark sections on there. We're now going to add our 19 on over here. Exactly the same thing. Hopefully that's the same width. You can see that one is exactly right. Now with this, I do find I'm going to use the bit that I'm adding on as my base going through the sewing machine. It just makes it a little bit smoother to do the um, stitching on. You don't have those lumps or risks of twisting your seam joins, which you've now called, got, taken all that time to press open. If you're not able to see those, sometimes those flop over on the back as well. And now we've only got two little sides to put on and then we're finished. And you can see this is a much, much more, it, there's a lot more work to do in this block than you've had in previous blocks. There are 20 steps in this block, but it's a lot easier because you're actually just able to take time, check that what you've learned through this whole process, how you've increased your understanding of what a quarter inch is as well, and you can also then recognize how much you've improved because the very first block we did was a log cabin, much smaller than this one with fewer pieces. But I guarantee you, what I guarantee you, but by the time you go back and look at this, when you measure it, firstly, it's going to be exactly the size it needs to be. Um, and what's great is, is that I'm, I'm not, no, if you've not done one before, go measure your first block and see if that measures the right size. And if it doesn't, that's fine. I'll show you how to fix that next in week 12. But now look at this. When your perfect block now, your log cabin in week 10, if that measures the exact size, that's what you're looking for is that progression in your skills and how much more confident you are, how you understand a scant quarter inch. I'm loving the fact that people are doing all these different projects, not just the block of the week, and they're hearing me talk about a scant quarter inch and then their, their projects are improving as they're going along because of the techniques they're learning in the block of the week, which I love. I think that's a really nice thing. And that's what this is for, to extend your knowledge, understand what you're doing and 
where you can make improvements. And that's what the basis of this is, is it's skill learning and skill building. And this lovely little 550, isn't she adorable? It's a cute little one. Yes, and yes, somebody asked the question the other day. Yes, I have 39 slash 40 sewing machines. Yes, I do. Um, but also, I do talk to all of my sewing machines exactly like I do to this, because I think they're such a huge part of our sewing journey. I think they are all people, really, but they're not. I do have names of some of my sewing machines, depending how well they're behaving. <laughs> So there we go. Many, many, many of them have different names for different stages in the process as well. So all I'm going to do now is show you. Oh, it's almost 15 and a half. If, well, no, the thing is as well, and I know in my ear it's cackling of laughter going, you're just stretching, it's not 15 and a half. But what is important is, yes, it may not be, so that's 15 and 3 eighths, but once you press this properly, you'll find that it actually does come to 15 and a half. Oh, that's the wrong way around. When you're using new rulers, you can see. Now, what's really funny is that's 15 and 6 eighths, six eighths. So obviously my little bit extra has gone over there. So do not trim your squares yet. Don't cut anything. You've got a finished block that doesn't measure. That's fine. I'm going to show you how to put them all together at the end of week 12. But that is how you're going to make this wonderful curvy log cabin for uh, your week 10. And now ahead of this, I'm going to unplug the iron because I don't do this every week, and then I can't understand why there's a funny smell of burning in the show. So there we go, I've hidden the iron, I'm getting rid of my fabulous June Taylor. Now the most popular bundle without question has to be our fabulous Block 10 Vintage. This is the colorway that we're doing it in over here, that's our vintage colorway here. You can see why it's such a great colorway, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wish I could find my finished Block 10s. What if I put them here? And I know what will happen is the second we've finished, we will find them. I'm sure I put them here. Oh, I know where I put them. There are my finished block tens. Yay! As if by magic, if I actually just use those things in my head called eyeballs, that would be helpful. So this is our vintage block finished. So you're getting the full instructions and the panel and you'll make this block and now you've got this wonderful tutorial available for you. So this is our block 10. Um, let me show you the panel and the set of instructions that you will get with that. So you're getting the wonderful set of instructions and this panel for the vintage colorway there. But don't forget if you haven't joined us in yet and you want to join in, don't worry, there's plenty of time. You can just go and get that fabulous bundle that we've got available. It's fabrics uh, bundles number one to 10. The vintage colorway is on your screen at the moment now. Um, if you don't fancy the vintage colorway and you quite like our blue colorway, the blue is the close second on all of this. This is what the blue block looks like as well. Isn't that gorgeous? Really beautiful, that blue colorway as well. And that is available too. So you can buy that individually there as the panel. And you've got the fabulous set of instructions as well. That'll make the block I've just shown you. And then this blue colorway over here, I'm not quite sure why Susan's still on the set. So Susan, thank you very much. She's loving showing that gorgeous backpack. So what we're doing then, that is the blue colorway of the quilt over there. And you can see really, really effective, very, very beautiful on the blue. And then last, but certainly not least, and there's definitely this beautiful colorway over here, the Brights colorway. Sorry, did I do the blue bundle? I'm sorry, I was just, I'm losing track. I'm getting so excited by it all. Week 10. So we've got the set of instructions and this wonderful panel available to you here. The finished block for the Brights colorway is this one here. Isn't that just stunning? Absolutely lovely. Well, I have to say that, so we've also got that available to you as well by the bundle. We've got all 10 as a bundle. But what I'm loving is that somebody the other day said to me online, and that's wonderful, I love people chatting with me online and things. What they're doing is they're actually getting some of the brights and they're mixing them in with the blues. And I know another person's got the vintage and the blues, um, and they're doing two separate quilts. But when they said they're mixing the colorways, I thought, 
genius i love that idea i think it's brilliant and it's such a nice way and that's what i love about this is that the the colors work so well sorry i'm getting backwards here this blue is the same blue as the the brights so you can very easily take one or two of these blocks and add it into your blue colorway or vice versa and do it that way it's a really nice way of being able to do that now don't forget if you don't want to buy all of the bundles together um you're getting there we've got different block bundles on the page so you can go through and check out if you type in block of week you'll be able to get all of the different blocks that are in there so you can go back and if you've missed week seven you can go and get those individually you can see different bundles on the page as well so go through and check the website out the big bundles are usually the most popular if people are just starting it's just easier you order the whole lot and it comes to you in one big pack you're getting blocks one to ten then in the vintage colorway which is this colorway over here this is where we're up to at the moment. So that's our gorgeous vintage colorway. We've also got, and this is where we are now. So you can see on the top row were blocks one, seven, five. Then the second row is four, three. And as a sneak preview, that last one in that row is block 12. Doesn't that look like a diamond? It looks like a diamond set in a ring. I love it. And then you've got in the third row, block two, nine, which we did last week and six. Um, and then the last row, we've got block eight. Um, and then we've got block 11, which is coming up next week. And then this week's one is number 10. So you'll be able to get, if you ordered your bundle there of one to 10, you'll have more than enough fabric to finish off all 10 of those blocks. And what I'm loving is people are posting how much fabric they've got left, which is great because there's gonna be loads of things that you can do with all of that fabric as well. Um, so if you're looking at the blue colorway as well, so let me show you where we are on the blue colorway there. If the one, blocks one to 10 as a bundle are available as well for £119.90, you'll be able to see the first row is one, seven and five. We've then got row two, which has got block four, three, and then the last block there is 12, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, and then the third row is two, nine, and six. Number nine is what we did last week. And then the last row, you've got eight, and then that'll be block 11, which we'll do next week. And number 10, so all of those are available for you to be able to buy as a bundle, all 10 of the blocks that we've done so far. And if you are gonna get that bundle, don't worry about it, you have not missed out on anything because our fabulous YouTube page, which if you go onto YouTube and type in Sewing Street, you'll be able to subscribe to that channel. Um, and if you look under the video option there, you'll be able to go through and see each week we pull out the block of the week as a separate video. So you'll be able to then catch up on all the videos of uh, weeks one to 12, to 10 all of them will be available today's block will probably be pulled out and available for you for tomorrow um, and then you'll be able to pull that out and see watch each and every single video of all 10 of the videos that we've done so far and you can catch up with those easily and if there's certain areas that you're struggling a little bit with you can pause the video carry on with the work and come back and especially with the trimming of things down it's a nice way of being able to catch up with them do them nice and slowly perhaps I did the demo a little bit fast for you doing it live you can go back on YouTube and you can put it on your pad press pause do what you're doing, come back and restart it. And if that doesn't work, make sure you check out our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, we've got our Facebook page, uh, Sewing Street TV, as well as our Sewing Street fans page. And if I haven't answered the question for you or can't answer the question for you, somebody else will get to you to be able to do that. And I ref refer back to that every single day as much as I can. So now we're going to have a little break because we've had a lot on this morning. I'm very excited. We've got some fabulous new products with you. Also from Janome as well, which I'm really excited to share you with. We just share with you, should I say. Um, and we'll be back in a minute or two once we've redone the set. Thank you so much. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket.
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring your question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hasn't it been the most fantastic morning? I am so excited and to end my day off with Tula. Sorry, I'm going to carry on. We've first got the wonderful products from Janome this morning. Janome have made this wonderful, wonderful mat. And what's so fabulous about it is three or four things about it, all of it, but three or four things mainly, the colour. I love grey, I love pink, and I love the fact that these are such a light grey and such a bold pink, because when you're cutting and you're looking down on it, sometimes you're cutting a fabric that doesn't quite work with the colourways of your ruler or things like this. This is such a nice colour. So whatever fabric you put on top of it, I'm going to put my tula on top. You can see very clearly around it, nice, the size that you're wanting to cut. So it's a really great colour that it's got that contrast to the uh, fabric that you're doing. You've got the usual, the size of it is so great as well. So this is an A2 mat, 42, point, uh, 42 centimetres by 59 or 18 inches by 24. Um, so really, really good size mat to be able to do that, uh, to anything on it. So the A3 might be a little bit small for you and the extra large might just be a bit big. So what's really great about this is this is a nice midway point to be able to get between those two. And it's really, really great if you're looking to do any um, uh, products, any sort of taking your mat with you. It's a much more transportable mat. Uh, to, <laughs> so... As if by magic, a ruler I forgot to get during the break just magically appeared then, sorry. 
<laughs> trying to surreptitiously put that onto the stage. Sorry about that, sorry. So we've got the imperial side here in the inches, and then obviously you've got your, in, your metric on this side as well. And what I love is you've got these lovely pink lines with the angles that you need for your ruler, as well, your, any form of cutting as well. And there's no extra postage and packaging when you're ordering mats. So just remember that's the £3.95 postage and packaging throughout the day. You only pay that the once. And what I love about this as well is... Oh, I love it. I love it. Extra large stropology. We all love the stropology rulers. You can do so much with them and you know how much how fond of them I am. You've also then able to get the extra large stropology onto this mat. And I feel really bad because Hannah said to me, you can put it on there. I said, really? Because it's such a great size mat, but this ruler is enormous. I thought you could only get these on the really extra large ex Millwood mat, but look, it fits perfectly. And you've got space left over over here. So you can then see you've got more than enough space to do the cutting on this mat as well. So the extra, the largest sort of stropology ruler we do fits on this mat. There are so many good things about this Janome mat. Really, really great product. Again, you've got your 45 degree, your 60 degree, your another 45 degree line. Is, and you can't use your rotary cutter without a mat. And just look at that. It's such a nice contrast color there. It's a lovely, lovely product to be able to add to your quilting uh, or even dressmaking or any of your sewing arsenal. I think it's a really nice mat. And it's a nice color as well. I love gray. And I think the gorgeous pink that they've used, it works so, so beautifully there. Again, you've got the imperial on one side, the metric on the other. This goes to 58 centimeters to 43 on the mat. Uh, it's slightly larger because of the actual borders and everything you get on it but it's such a nice mat it's a really really nice color and it's a really really good quality mat as well nice size to take with you now if you've got the mat you probably want to have a ruler so at the, this price point for rulers we don't have very much else because this is such a great uh, price and it's such a great ruler as well. This is the Imperial ruler, the inches version of it as well. And what you're looking at here, what I love, as you saw earlier when I was cutting the um, block of the week, because the measurements are not only in pink, but they're also in black, because you can see perhaps a little bit better there, it's on the, it's the, the, the markings are in pink. And most of the fabric that most of us cut isn't pink. But when you are cutting darker fabric, sometimes the darker lines are more difficult to read. So having that nice little pink addition to that makes things a little bit easier when you are cutting uh, with the Janome ruler. These are left and right handed, so you can see you've got your one to six over there and you've got your 1 to 6 over there, you've got your 1 to 24 that way, and you've got your 1 to 24 that way. You've got your um, angles on the ruler on this side, and you've got them on this, oh no, just check, yes it is, I thought it was on the mat, just wanted to double check, so you've got your, your angles going both ways there, that being your 30 degree, 45 and 60, 60, 45 and 30, so you've got all those there. Hmm? And then don't forget, if you wanted to get this, this doesn't have one of those grips on it that the other rulers may have, but you can easily purchase those extra grips very, very easily. It's a, it's a really, really affordable way of being able to get started if you do want to get the grips as well. And if you just type in grips and ruler on the website, it'll pop up. Otherwise, just keep typing grips and it'll be in our wonderful search things with starter ruler size as well. This is a really, really lovely ruler. It's six inches by 24. So you haven't got that uh, half inch confusion sometimes that you're putting it on and you're thinking, which way am I cutting this? It's a really, really usable ruler. Nice size, transparent as it is. And that lovely pink and black coloring, I think is just brilliant. Really, really great there. So that's the Imperial 24 inch by six inch ruler. But, but if you're wanting to do metric on your metric board, you've also got this fabulous metric ruler, which gives you all in centimeters. Now, I know that a lot of the quilt patterns that come from France are in centimeters to save you cut transporting, uh, transposing the figures back into 
transposing, transferring, converting. That's the word I'm trying to look for. Nowhere near that. It will save you converting your centimetres back into inches. This is a really lovely ruler for you there, available in centimetres. You've got the metric side of your mat. You've got your metric side of the ruler. You've got all your black markings on this as well. So these aren't in the pink like the Imperial. You've got your words in pink and then the markings in the black. So for dressmaking or bag making, or you're going to be doing some quilting patterns from France, what a beautiful way to do this and such a lovely price. Australia as well, I think, uses the uh, metric, but I'm terrified I'm going to get that wrong and end up getting a thing. But I think that it is, I'm sure I've seen Australian patterns coming out in metric as well. But either way, if you're just looking for a really great 60 centimeter by 15 centimeter ruler here, really, really great price. Love for bag making dressmaking, anything that uses the imperial side of things, the metric side of things, really, really great product that, and that is the equivalent to the six and a half by 24 inch, but this is 15 centimeters by 60 centimeters. You've still got your um, diagonal lines that you'd need for any form of um, angles that you're gonna cut. And it's a re making bias binding, nice way of doing that as well. Bag making, dressmaking, that's where we are for that. That's the, the metric ruler that we've got available there. We've got so much on the show today, I love it. Next, we've got our Tula Pink. Uh, what are we doing, uh, jelly rolls first? Jelly rolls. So yours will come to you like this, nice, pristine, and beautiful. Ours has been interrupted. I'm gonna call it interrupted, because I love jelly rolls, but once you've unrolled them, you can't get them back in. It's just impossible. This is the most fabulous, fabulous collection of fabric. It's called Homemade. Uh, Tula Pink is the most incredible quilt fabric designer um, available. She's not available. She's in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and she is just the most amazing. Oh, look at that. Sorry. I'm just looking at that. Look how I've managed to line those two fabrics up there without even trying. So what I love about these is the jelly rolls is a nice way of being able to get a, a two and a half inch by 42 inch strip of every single fabric in the range and the range is exceptional. Some of them you're gonna get two pieces, some of them you'll get one piece. So you can see you're getting two pieces of that one, two pieces of that one. This one I think you only get one piece of, but I can't remember. But you can just see they're a beautiful, beautiful collection. These are all the pieces of hardware that Tula makes individually and sells individually, and they're just a nice homage to what she has designed and what she's made. These are just cupcakes, which I think is just beautiful, little sprinkles there. And this is um, a, a sewing machine. These are part of the fabric with regards to the Bernina sewing machine that Tula designs. You've got the wonderful safety pins there, and all these hands are so great, showing how you would use all the different products as well. These I love, because you've got these wonderful little eyes in the scissors that uh, they get, they're staring you at you, they're watching you, which I love this. And this gorgeous teal and, not teal, orange and pink fabric here. I was looking at this fabric as I said teal. This wonderful orange and pink combination, they're just gorgeous. She's got such a great eye for color. And all of these different designs, the Jelly Roll has got two and a half inch strips all the way through of these different colors, going all the way to these beautiful blues up to those gorgeous oranges and pinks. And all of the colors in here, you can see that yellow there is the same yellow as the safety pins that she's used here. And all the way through, she's got that wonderful synergy of color. And I've just seen Joe is zooming in now to show you that. You can see that wonderful yellow there of the, sp of the sprinkles is the same as the yellow that you've got there. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color combination there. The quilt behind me, I've used a jelly roll to make those. This used a whole uh, jelly roll, but I actually used two jelly rolls because I wanted to get all these lines going through. You can see um, this fabric goes all the way through there and it just, it's got that wonderful symmetry on it as well. If you're looking for the demo on how I made that, you can go and look at that. Was that last Friday? I think it was last Friday or was it Saturday? Or was it Monday? They all blur into one in lockdown. No one knows what day it is or when the bins are getting collected. So that was, um, someone's going to look that up now and have a look and see. But it was a really lovely, lovely fabric uh, to use. Wonderful way to be able to add some wonderful cream with that. I think we used ivory with that as well, which I love. And I'm currently working on a project at the moment using Tula, where I've used a bit of ivory and uh, Tula pink jelly rolls to be able to do that. So that, watch out for that. That's coming up. 
And so that is the design role, uh, the jelly, jelly roll. So we're calling it design roll, sorry. So this is what it looks like when it's taken out of its little bundle. So if you don't want it to look like this, leave it in the bundle. <laughs> and you get that nice little label that comes with it. But then don't worry about that if you don't want to do that. We've also got, wow, okay. So we have, now this is, less than 10 left. Before I start this conversation, there are less than 10 of these 10 inch layer cakes. We've called them 10 inch charm packs. Um, there are less than 10 of these available. So if you want a tulip pink 10 inch layer cake, put it in your basket now and check out because if you haven't checked out, it's not yours. And when there are less than 10, unfortunately what may happen is you, six of you may have them in the basket, somebody's buying two or three of them, checks out and then you don't have the product anymore, it's been checked out. So until you actually check that out, this isn't available for you. So make sure if you are after a Tula Pink 10 inch charm pack, make sure you check that out now. This only launched on the 8th of June, which was on Monday. That was when I did this. So we're almost selling out of our 10 inch things. So this is if you wanted to do any form of bag making, quilt making, anything like that. This is what this gorgeous layer cake is going to look like. So what I'll do is I'll show you now the individual pieces because we've opened one. So I can show you exactly what they look like. I know when we had these out on the Monday, I think the hexagon sold out on that day, which I'm not surprised about. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So what you've got here, you've got 42 10 inch squares. So if you're new to quilting and you've never made a quilt before, what you might want to do is to, to just simply take these 42 inch squares, you're getting two of those, and just sew them together. So all you would do is do a quarter inch seam down the side, sew six in one row, and you sew seven rows of six, and you've got a beautiful patchwork quilt. If you lay these all out in a normal width of fabric, you're gonna be getting four, across, four as your height, because most fabric's 40 inches wide, and you're then going to have 10 this way and have two left over. So the 10 inches this way will give you 100 inches of fabric, which is a little over two and a half meters, and then you'll have two left over. So you're gonna get more than two and a half meters of fabric there, all of the individual designs of this fabulous homemade range by Tula Pink, and you're only paying $34.99 there. And it's such a great, great fabric. Look at that. This is the sewing machine that she actually has designed for Bernina. You can get them in all the different colored polka dots on there. That's the foot and the plug. And you can just see that brilliant design ethos that she has, being able to create those wonderful different designs on there. Hmm? Now, if you have followed us on our ins, if you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, please go and check that out. Look at that! Sorry, the the fabric is watching you through the little things there. But if you are on the Instagram um, following us at the moment, do also check out Tula Pink. She's got the most phenomenal Instagram page, absolutely inspiring and aspiring. Because I look at all of her designs and she's got and all of her posts and everything. It's really, really entertaining. Lovely, lovely to watch, and it's great because she does a, a Tula Talk Tuesdays now, um, where she actually does a little live feed around her studio and talk about studio envy. Oh my goodness, the she's just got the most fantastic area that she lives and works in, and she works with her whole family. And you let, get to learn more about her as well, which is probably why I adore her so much and adore her fabric so much, is because I've met her and I've met her mum, and they're a wonderful group and a great, great team together and just watching being able to share a little bit of share a few moments in her home it just brings you that little bit closer to each other that way and I think that's the great thing about social media but it's great for you to go and then follow on our page as well and then anything that we're, we're linking that on you'll be able to see and this is what I love about getting the charm of the layer cakes rather than the jelly rolls is because you'll be able to get the larger piece of the fabric and you'll be able to have those three eyes watching you in one little piece. There's no guarantee you're gonna get it in the blue because they cut these all individually. But equally, look at that gorgeous Bernina in a different colorway right there. It's just a lovely way to get a nice little taste of her fabrics uh, when potentially buying a fat quarter or something of all of her fabrics. Not all the shops sell all the fabrics in one go. So it's great for you to be able to then do this this way. You get a nice taste of all the fabrics that you've got. Now, all the fabrics that I've just shown you will be the same for the 10 inch and the 5 inch fabrics. 
Um, so all of these are the same through both of those. You're getting 42 different pieces of fabric. Some of them are two, some of them are one, just depending on how it goes. It's just what it is that you'll be able to get. Some fabrics are more popular than others, um, and some they think would be more usable for you, which is why they give you two of one piece rather than one. So that's going to be our 10 inch layer cake. That's available now. We had less than 10 before I started this. That's available for $34.99. If you are interested in getting the 10 inch layer cake please make sure you check your basket out I would hate for you to have it in there be looking at something else and then lose out on the 10 inch layer cake by Tula Pink for $34.99 just check out on that now it doesn't cost you any more money to check out multiple times during the day just don't want you to lose out on that so that's our 10 inch layer cake but don't worry you want something smaller we've got our 5 inch layer cakes as well the fabric I've just shown you on the 10 inch is exactly the same as what you're going to get in the 5 inch square they'll just be a little bit smaller now we always over order our five inch, uh, five, five inch charm packs because they're so popular and it's a really great size. This is without question the most popular size of doing it. Now when you make these as well, I think we worked it out, was it a meter and a quarter you were getting? I can't remember what we said. That math's confused all of us. So you've got 42 pieces here, five inches wide. You're gonna have eight across to get you your length. It'll be five pieces this way. So that'll be 25 inches this way. Don't know how many meters is 25. I think that's just over half a meter. And you've got a really, really lovely combination of different colors and everything that you're getting there. Again, wonderful price there, $14.99 available to you today. We have got stock of these as well. And the colorways was exactly what I just did for the 10 inch ways there. So shall I, I'll show you a few of them because you can see, and you can see that um, Hannah was doing some EPP on them as well, which I love doing all these different things. And what I love is you'll be able to see there, she's, when I was talking to you about the eyes, she's able to then go and fussy cut each piece out into the different sections. If you want the little hand in the middle, you can fussy cut that hand out all the way through the middle. And oh, there's another beautiful one there. You can have that there, either dropping the heart that way, or you're catching it if you put it that way. It's just a lovely, lovely fabric range to be able to do and play. And you can see all the different colors are exactly what you're getting in the 10 inch squares. It's just a really beautiful colorway there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And there we go. So I've got my Janome thread snips here as well, which are really, sorry, I've just realized I forgot the Janome on the side here. Sorry about that. These are fantastic. They're a really lovely pair of snips. Um, these are four inch handy thread snips. Oh no. Sorry, I read this wrong. It's a five inch handy thread snips there and the five inches going from there to there. You just squeeze those together when you're trying to use them. Really, really, really great product this, and it's really easy to use. And what I love is such, look at that price. Now, come on, how much when did you, how much did you last pay for a pair of snips? I can tell you now they weren't $2.99. These are available today from Janome. Really, really great price, lovely little product there. And these are available, you can use these for any form of snips. And at that price, you can get two or three because you could just use one for your cotton threads, one for your paper. Just a really nice little pair of threads on this as well. Yes. Oh. I am hearing now that the Imperial Janome um, ruler is proving to be incredibly popular this morning. This morning, not only is this the most popular of the Janome products this morning, but it's also the best price we've ever had available for a six inch by 24 inch ruler. If you're looking to get into quilting, it's a nice little starter ruler for you to start with um, and such a great price. Um, and it doesn't have the grips on that some of the other products do, but those are readily available and you can easily do that. Otherwise we've got the grippy glue spray as well. Um, you can go and check out our website for the sprays on that as well to make them non-slippy as well. But that's selling really, really well today. So if you are interested in getting one of those, just make sure to be aware that it is available there as well. Um, we've also got some fabulous fabrics over here. Are we going to do these or are we doing the rotary cutters, the gingham? So of the gingham, this is the most beautiful feeling gingham that we've got here. This isn't available. Is this a bundle or is it individual? These are all individual, but I'll just show you. Look how incredible they look together. Aren't they brilliant? Now, the last time we had these on, they were sold so incredibly well. 
They are a true, true gigan that they're actually they're actually woven. And the feel on it is absolutely beautiful. So those are the four. It's not sold as a bundle. I'm just showing the colors there together. We'll start, we'll start with the red. What? That can't be right. So if you are doing bag making, I'm looking at this price here, $3.99 for a half meter. And this is a genuine 100% cotton gingham. You can feel the difference on it. It is just beautiful. $3.99 available there. Available. <laughs> Um, so these would be available. I wouldn't probably use this for quilting. I'd probably use these for more bag making and um, maybe dressmaking. We had the, um, I was catching up on the sewing bee the other day and I was a bit behind. And they were using those old recycled bags. And I just love the way that gingham and the check looked on those different bags. There you go, put those four together. That could be a nice, your, your own little sewing bee uh, challenge that you could set for yourself. So this again is 100% cotton gingham. This is in blue. So we've only just got more stock of this available now. We're always constantly working to make sure that we're getting in all these products in. Um, and when they sell so well, it's very, very we want to make sure that we keep them coming to you because you're loving them. If you've got any suggestions as well about what you're wanting to get in, make sure you drop us a message on um, Sewing Street's uh, fan page, not fan page, on the... TV page on the TV page because obviously the fan page doesn't have a message option So you can drop us a message on our TV channel page, which is sewing street TV There's a little message button there Otherwise drop us a message in the studio and we can easily then pass that on to the people who are in charge that much more clever than me Than they're doing these and getting these gorgeous colors this lovely pink fuchsia color. Oh helps if I could grab them this one sold so, so well the last time. They were checking out in multiple units the last time we had them on, and you can see why. I'm actually looking at this and thinking, gosh, that would make the most gorgeous tablecloth. for a, We've got a little outside garden table area. That would make the most gorgeous cover for that. Or a lovely little curtain or a Roman blind. And we've all been spending so much time at home and looking around and thinking, don't like that, don't want that. We could give everything a nice little freshen up. So, oh, imagine little oven gloves for these. That would be good. Or even tea towels. I'm actually feeling these now and thinking as a little tea towel, these would be great as well. And then last but certainly not least in this gingham, we've got this gorgeous yellow. That is available as well, $3.99. Such a great price for such a lovely product. And the feel of them is so lovely. And that is such a lovely product there. Sold so well the last time we had them on. But I'm just thinking, as a, when you go downstairs and you come into a nice summery um, kitchen and you've got these hanging and looking at you, wouldn't that just be lovely? It's got a, such a lovely yellow on that. Always popular. Got those back in. Are they back in today? So I think we got those back in today. It's just such a lovely product there. We've all, <laughs> sorry, I wish you could all hear talk back sometimes. It's very funny. So what we're doing here, and uh, no show is complete with me on it without me raving about my favorite quilting tool that I've ever had. Really, really great product, this. This is the Fiskars Fabric, I'm gonna call it Fabric Guillotine for the want of a better word. You've got this fabulous 24 and a half inch, a 24 inch ruler this way, six and a half inch that way. You've got all your angles there, really, really great product there. And if you look at it from that way, you'll be able to see when you want to activate it. <laughs> so, um, so, so there we go. You can see me pushing that down. That gets the fa that then will cut your fabric all the way along there. Um, the reason that's not on there is because I had it on a ruler, you could see there. And you can see that's a really nice, easy movement to do it. Now, I have problems with my back, with my spine, with my neck. So when I activate it, I can use my wrist very comfortably there and do that and cut. I don't recommend that you do it that way. If that works for you, great, but please, please be safe. Be safe on this as well. And I'm just looking in that mirror, in that uh, camera shot there. This blade needs changing. So don't forget about our wonderful early bird. I'm not gonna do that because I don't have time, but make sure you check out our early bird as well. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, 
when you post on our fans page every week, myself, Vicky and Debbie go through the page. We trawl through it and look for the make of the week. And I tell you now, you do not make it easy for me. I sat there, I had nine choices this week and I had to pick my favorite one. There were nine this week. You are so talented as a community. You make it incredibly hard for me to go through there and find my favorite make of the week. So this week, we are very, very proud to announce that we've got our top three winners. I am so sorry for mispronouncing your name, Andrea. I don't know how to say your surname. I'm gonna go with Concanon. If I got that wrong, I'm very sorry. Then we have Sharon Simmons and Elaine Morton. I am so, so proud to bring you these here. We've got Ed Andrea Concanon. That's your make of the week. And that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is from Debbie's new book. So congratulations on that. And then we've got Sharon Simmons. Look how beautiful that is. The delicate work on there is incredible. And finally, we've got Elaine Morton. Tell me that is just not a little ball of happiness there. All three of you, congratulations. You've won free postage and packaging on your next order. Make sure you drop us a line on our Sewing Street TV page. Drop us a message and you'll each be given a code for your free postage and packaging for your next order with Sewing Street. Wow. So you're, anybody wanting the Tula pink 10 inch layer cakes? We have less than five left now. So if it's in your basket, if you've got anything in your basket that you haven't checked out that you really want, please make sure you check out. We don't want you to lose out as well. I mentioned to you very briefly there where I was gonna change my rotary cutter blade there. Um, the early bird today I think is absolutely phenomenal. We've got six rotary cutter blades there. If I could hold them, that would be handy. We've got, these are incredible. We've got three in each pack. These are available, two of these for 13.98. So you're gonna be saving four pounds getting both of these today. At the beginning of the show, we had that wonderful video where I was able to show you how to change your rotary cutter and what to do with your old blades and things as well. So that was a nice little thing to be able to share with you. This is just the most fantastic deal that we've had. Now, I know this is gonna sound like a, is that 50 individual or 50 combined? Is that 50 combined or 50 individual? Right. So I know this is gonna sound like a lot, but as you can imagine, we sell quite a few. Um, we are less than 50 of these left. And I know you're gonna sit there and go, oh, that's, that's loads, I'll easily be able to do it. In my experience, you do not want to wait because we sell hundreds of these and we do not want you to lose out. We have got 50, less than 50 of these available now. So if you are looking for rotary cutter blades, you're gonna be so much kinder to yourself, to your hands, your cutting process. You all know the minute you've changed a rotary cutter, how much happier you feel, how much easier your cutting is. These are all, normally $8.99 singularly so you know you're going to be saving four pounds by getting the two of them together such a great deal today and unfortunately early birds they're available not for the whole day sometimes because they sell out so if these sell out they won't be available again at that price it's such a great deal so please don't miss out on all of those it's a really lovely deal there 13.98 for those two together for the whole day um we've got the so tomorrow, what have we got on tomorrow? Tomorrow is Vicky, isn't it? We've got Vicky in tomorrow. Oh, and remember it's National Sewing Machine Day tomorrow. So check out our Instagram story today. I did a really nice little video there with um, Hannah and Joe earlier. So check that out on our Instagram. You've got the sewing machine deals in the morning, first thing at eight o'clock. Then we've got the Alexia messenger bag with Kerry from Living in Loveliness. And then lastly, we've got sewing, mach sewing room tools. Oh, I need to slow down today. <laughs> so don't forget, if you haven't shopped with us before, check out our website, www.sewingstreet.com. Failing that, we've got our fabulous UK-based call centre, 0800 001 4433. They'll be able to answer any questions or queries that you have in regards to the product. And they're a really nice um, group of people just to chat with. They can be quite busy at the moment. If you're wanting to shop on the website and you haven't done so before, don't be worried when it goes onto the Jewelry Maker page. There are sister channel and they're very kindly lending us part of their website in order to do this right now while we're rebuilding our own. First of all, if you're watching that live, you're going to click on there and you'll get me going, hello. 
and we don't click on that now because we'll get up with echoes and things like that. And then if you go beneath that, you'll see their shop by catalog. Um, if you want to go into the catalog, that's one way of doing it. Failing that, beneath that, you've got all of our wonderful products that we've had on today's show. Uh, all of the block of the weeks, so you've got our block of the week bundles with all 10 of the bundles there as well. Everything's available for you to then see um, until it all sells out. Once it sells out, if you do need to catch up on our past blocks, there they all are. You can see we're now on block six. And then when you've run out of space, you can then just click onto the, where it says page two there, there we go. Click on that and then you do exactly the same thing. And then you can see block five, block four, block three, block two, block one. And then all of the lovely products that we've had on the show today as well. Don't forget those um, Tula Pink 10 inch charm packs are selling really, really well. And then the that was the jelly roll that we looked at there, just a little bit above, there we go. You can see it there, that's selling really, really well at the moment. Um, and then there are a few things that we didn't get to today because we had such a great demo with that bag earlier on. So go through and have a check on those products and I cannot I, I just love today's show it was brilliant make sure you go through the website as well because I love it I go through all of that and look through the website and see different things that I haven't seen or shows that I've missed it's a really nice way to be able to go through and see what's still available there to buy so we've had a fabulous show today. Please make sure you check in tomorrow morning at eight o'clock with Vicky. We've got National Sewing Machine Day. Subscribe to Instagram. It's such a great page. It's a wonderful one to see. Um, and we'll be able to then catch up with you. I've got a whole week off. I'm not sure how my schedule's worked out with this, but I'll see you again next Friday for Block of the Week. And I hope you all stay safe. Thank you all so much for your time today. Have a wonderful weekend. Catch up soon. Bye-bye.